especially near such um, a heavily populated area, especially at this time of night on a Friday when folks are often on their way to their weekend plans, you got to know what's coming and you got to be in that lowest, most interior room. The circulation within this, unfortunately, has slowed some forward speed. This is another way that we, uh, that we look for the indication of rotation. This is the shear signature. I'll put it, back it up just a little bit so you can see how this is really starting to expand quickly. So clearly the bullseye is what catches your eye. That is the area of greatest concern. So some indications of some 84 mile per hour gate to gate shear here, gate to gate meaning wind moving in opposite directions. That second area of circulation that I identified, you can see not quite as strong as far as the shear signature goes, but it's plenty potent. We may have two sister circulations just south of the Hopkinsville area moving to the east at 30 miles per hour. I want to put storm tracks out on both of these areas of circulation, and then we're going to zoom in street level to give you a good sense of what you can expect at the surface, or at least the roads, the folks, um, the neighborhoods that are really under the gun with this. So moving towards Westbrook at 649, near Holiday School at 650, so that's three minutes away. Uh, Green Hill Church at 654. Pembroke would be in your neighborhood right around 7 o'clock. Now, that southern circulation, the shear starting to pick up with that. Storm track on this puts it into Locust Grove Church at 646. Vernon Church at 647 near Big Walnut Grove Church at 651. So we're going to zoom in really tight and take a look at the streets. First, we'll go to circulation number one. This is near Church Hill. So the strongest area of rotation now being indicated between Huffman Mill Road and G. Hale Road. Again, this is right near the Churchill area. This is, gosh, one to two miles. I can measure it out for you from seven miles from downtown Hopkinsville. Now, uh, over towards Beverly is where we're also seeing, unfortunately, that, sh that shear signature. Shear is defined as wind moving in different directions or wind moving at different speeds. So clearly that's how we would define a tornadic circulation. This is near Masonville Beverly Road and Memory Lane. Old Palmyra Road as well. Uh, this is near Highway 107. It's just on the northeast side of Interstate 24. Uh, and at this point, we are getting reports of several trees down across parts of Trigg County. Of course, that's where this warning originated. Uh, and we are looking at two possible areas of uh, rotation and potentially um, that tornado concern. So backing it out, I want to give you a sense of where this is moving. I mentioned that the storm system has slowed just a touch. The forward speed now at 30 miles per hour, not 50. But there are two areas of concern. They are south of Hopkinsville. So the tornado threat is in this circled area here. It's between Hopkinsville and Oak, and Oak Grove. The severe straight line wind threat extends throughout the whole duration of this storm. So we are clearly going to spend the most time on the tornado warning because this presents the most significant danger. However, I want folks to know that if you are starting to hear that rumble of thunder, there is a 70 mile per hour wind threat for all across the area. Uh, at this point, we are starting to get some reports of um, that there may have been a visual confirmation of this tornado. These are early reports. Uh, into the National Weather Service. This is a look at our Skynet camera. We have not observed that on our Skynet camera, but this is a live look in Hopkinsville, pouring rain, howling wind. Uh, there are reports now of shingles off of some roofs near parts of Lover's Lane and the new sports complex. Uh, not surprised to see these. We had reports coming through southern, a lot of lightning lighting up the sky there as well. We had reports coming through southern parts of Illinois and southern parts of Missouri of shingles off roofs just because of the straight line wind. So this is a uh, significant tornado threat for Christian County, especially for folks south of the Hopkinsville area. I'm, this is a, a look, we'll go back to radar here. So again, looking at that possibility for rotation, looking at that rotation signature, it's just the tiniest bit broader here in the last few frames, but with the signature as strong as it was, this is not something that we can turn our back on, especially since we may be getting some reports that folks have visually confirmed this. So this is a real threat. This is something we want folks to take seriously. Need you down in that lowest, most interior room of your house. It is south of Hopkinsville and it's moving due east. So if you're on the north side of town, your threat is straight line wind and the potential for flooding.
If you're on the south side of town, especially closer to Interstate 24 uh, in near Oak Grove, Pembroke, you're the next one in line for this. And if the storm system can hold together, it would eventually moving uh, be moving towards the Elkton area. Uh, you would be in the in the path of, of the most dangerous part of this storm system. So here's another look at the rotation as we come down a little bit closer to it. We'll take another look at that shear signature since we saw it perk up so much as it was coming through. Backing it up, you can see how it, there were really two areas of concern. Upwards of 80 miles per hour, 85, 90 miles per hour indicated uh, of shear here. Uh, significant signature on rotation, and it is not just that, unfortunately. It's also the hail threat. This is absolutely a trifecta. This is a triple whammy as far as your severe weather threat for tonight. Main area of concern remains south of Hopkinsville. This tornado warning is in effect until 730. I do want to show you some of the other storms because I am concerned about uh, the severe weather impacts for folks south of this area as well. We only have one tornado warning at this point. I don't mean to say only, but we, we have a multitude of severe thunderstorm warnings that extend down towards Benton County and even over towards Carroll County, just to the west. This entire storm system is going to march across the mid-state. So till 730 is the tornado warning for Christian County. If that rotation signature holds together, Todd, you're next in line. I don't have to show you. You see how that lightning signature has really blossomed. This is an incredibly energetic, incredibly potent and strong storm system. South of that, we're not seeing the same indications for rotation, but we are seeing straight line wind, especially along the leading edge, extend through Stewart County, uh, through northern parts of uh, Houston and Humphreys County, Benton County. The main threat is actually just now pushing out of Henry County, so if you're in Paris, Tennessee, things should be improving pretty quickly. The wind likely not howling nearly as loudly as it was outside. You can actually see the National Weather Service releasing the backside of that warning. As far as the severe thunderstorm warning for Callaway County, they are also, uh, they're releasing the backside of that. We have a confirmed wind gust in Hopkinsville of 55 knots. That's 63 miles per hour right now. That's a straight line wind speed that's been measured. There's also reports of trees and power lines down across the county in Stewart County. I expect power lines and trees to continue to come down tonight because of this storm threat. So you clearly see that anywhere along the leading edge of this, there is no one in our viewing area that is not going to be impacted by strong to severe storms tonight. The most dangerous storm that we have at this point is, is centered in the Hopkinsville area and extends to the south. The heaviest rain and likely uh, some small hail potentially upwards of three quarters of an inch likely moving into the hopkinsville area here's another look of our skynet camera there you can see conditions not great and there are so many folks on the road it's 6:53 on a friday night this is when most folks are just getting geared up to start their weekend it is critical you can be such a valuable voice in getting weather information because if folks are in their car they are not watching me. They are certainly not listening to me tell them that there's a danger, a real danger outside right now. So if you can send them a text message, call them, tell them that they should pull into a structure, that they should get into a sturdy interior building, that is the absolute best thing you can do at this point. We'll take a closer look, a deeper investigation to the storm threat here in uh, Christian County. Again, the tornado warning is the larger red box that you see. The rain swath is so large I'll just map it out. I mean, it's 13 miles across. It's more than 25 miles up and down. The rotation signature embedded within that is clearly not that large. It's much, much tighter. Uh, the best indication right now is that it is just south of the Pembroke area. So this is in between Interstate 24 and Highway 41. It's this territory right here. If there's any good news, we were getting an indication of two areas of circulation earlier. It's one now. It's right here. So this is just south of Pembroke. This is moving east at 30 miles per hour. So it puts it into the Trenton area. As long as that warning uh, or as long as the rotation can hold together, the National Weather Service may extend that warning as it moves further to the east. Uh, the, the severe wind threat has already been extended to the east. So a severe thunderstorm warning extends into Todd County because of that straight line wind threat. The concern for rotation, and you're seeing the, 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 the radar sweep come through. We're looking out of Nashville's radar. We'll switch over, especially because the further away you get from a radar signature, um, the higher up in a storm you're looking. And so it can be really valuable to switch radar signatures Unfortunately, the Paducah radar is too far away to see this. So thankfully, we have that National Weather Service radar out of Nashville. 
it looks like there may even be two areas that are trying to get their act together. I'll tell you, my greatest concern, and we'll put a storm track, an updated one on this, is just south of Pembroke. We'll also zoom in to get some street level mapping. So this is concern number one for me. But I'm also starting to notice this notch right here, right by Highway 68, which would put it just west of Elkton. Could be a strong uh, straight line wind gust out ahead of it, but that's something that I'm going to watch. And it's really the leading edge that we would continue to see a threat for any additional spin ups as we head into the evening hours tonight. So let's put a storm track on this. Let's zoom in really tight so the folks that are in the path know what they need to be looking out for. This is a storm track that takes it east. So it's on the east side of Christian County at this point. Uh, if the National Weather Service is, uh, feels that this signature is tight enough, they may extend that warning just a little bit further to the east. Uh, Edgefield Church. If you know folks or you know the territory that that's in, it's on your doorstep, two minutes away. Trenton, 703. Yeah, not surprised to see this. So the National Weather Service, they are concerned. Um, they're as concerned. So they've extended this tornado warning into Todd County until 730. And it's because of this exact circulation that you're looking at. So this tornado warning now extended into Todd County until 730. This been, it has been a persistent, long-lasting rotation. This warning started at 625. Uh, and it is ongoing because we continue to see that circulation uh, really persistent uh, on the radar here. So as far as who is in the path of this, it's in Christian County. It's on the eastern edge. It's just about to cross the county line into Todd County. It's moving to the east at 30 miles per hour. It's near Pembroke and Oak Grove. So just in between, you just saw we got another updated scan here. It's in this general territory, we see those brighter red pixels, and then you see the red coming on the back side of it. And you just got another update there, so we'll go ahead and move this further along. Gosh, I hate to see that. It even looks like this is tightening even more. Folks in the Trenton area, you're my biggest concern at this point. And what I mean by it tightening even more is you see that really bright green pixel that picked up? The colors, the green and the red, are they represent wind speed. So the brighter the green, or the deeper the red, and if you get into the purples, that's a faster wind speed. So in this most recent scan that just came out of the National Weather Service, red, red is air moving away, green is air moving towards, and it's starting to pick up in speed. At least the radar is seeing uh, stronger, faster wind speeds. This is moving towards Trenton. It's moving towards Highway 41. Uh, it's just now crossing the border, this dark line right here is the border between Christian and Todd County. I'm gonna zoom in street level so you can get a better sense of where this storm is. Especially if you know folks, not to sound like a broken record, but if you know folks that live in this area or even maybe have social plans in this area, help us get this word out. So the main road is uh, Tinsley Road. It looks like Boyd Road kind of connects into Tinsley Road. This is south of Highway 41. Main area of concern is right here. So Frederick Lane, eventually over toward Mims Road, Cemetery Road, Garth Road, that's where these areas would be working in. We're gonna take it in even tighter so folks can get a good sense of just exactly where this is located. Near Howard Dickerson Road, uh, eventually over towards um, Arlatel Lane, Mims Road, Smith Road, over towards Garth Road, and eventually it looks like um, highways 41, potentially 475 as well. So to give you some perspective too, I know it's really hard when you zoom in very, really tight on these storms. You can see how as the storm passed south of, Christ or south of Hopkinsville, you saw that rotation signature picking up just a little bit. Now it's south of Pembroke. So as far as who's in the clear, Pembroke, you are in the clear. Uh, south of you is where the threat passed and it has just now moved into Todd County, hence why the warning now extended until 730. Oak Grove, you are in the clear. You're not in the clear as far as thunderstorms and the hail potential, but you are in the clear as far as the rotational threat. This is what the radar looks like uh, right now. Unfortunately, there is still a considerable amount of lightning with this storm system, a considerable hail threat, and a considerable straight line wind threat. Along that leading edge, you can see severe thunderstorm warnings have now been issued through Cheatham County, Montgomery County, even into parts of Logan County in Kentucky. This extends down to Dixon and Hickman County. Uh, an update to the tornado warned storm. It's just south of Pembroke. It's eight miles west of Elkton, and it has picked up uh, with just uh, 
it has picked up in just a little bit more forward speed. It's now moving at 40 miles per hour. So quick update for folks that are on the leading edge of the severe thunderstorms because we are getting reports now of power, power, power lines down and the power out all across Stewart County. So the impacts of this incredibly strong line of storms, they're gonna be widespread and long lasting. Here's the storm track on the leading edge. So putting it into Bowling Green right around 714. Nashville, this will be on our doorstep downtown about 730, 745. Murfreesboro, this will be after 8 o'clock. And you were hard hit with some straight line winds just a couple nights ago. Now the main concern, of course, remains the rotation, the tornado worn storm that's now in. It's Gosh, it's hard to even pick it out with all that lightning, isn't it? So it is out of Christian County, and it is just now crossing the border into Todd County. So I mentioned earlier it's uh, it was about eight miles west of Elkton. And you can see the notching in the radar here. It's a little bit closer to the Trenton area. So it's this area of concern here. And putting some distance marks on this uh, right around the Trenton area. Sure enough, that's about eight miles away from eight to nine miles away from Elkton. We'll get an updated look at the forward motion of this part of the storm, the greatest area of concern for rotation. It's really been changing speeds quite a bit. So we were at 30 miles per hour. We were at 50 miles per hour, forgive me, then went to 30 miles per hour. And now we are up to 40 miles per hour. So here is a look at the storm track on this tornado worn storm that's moving through Todd County, Trenton, Folks near Anderson School, if you live near that school, you need to be down into that most interior room. You want to think about as many walls as you can put between you and the outside world. Uh, if you have a basement, that's clearly the best place to go. If you don't, an interior closet can often be your best choice. Sometimes uh, a closet or a crawl space under a stairwell, that's a good idea. Uh, a bathroom, getting down into a bathtub, pulling a mattress, or at least covering your head with whatever you can. That can be uh, a good resource as long as it's on a low, most interior level. You want to get away from exterior walls, even if they don't have windows, because debris can puncture those walls. So you want to, as tempting as it can be, to want to get some visual confirmation of damage from these storms, you're not going to get it. It's rain wrapped. The area of rain is far too large. The damaging straight line wind threat is far too widespread. So that's going to bring things down as the straight line wind. And then you've got this rotation signature embedded within, and that presents an extra level of danger, an extra element of danger as you head into the evening. So the tornado threat is over for Christian County, but it is now moving uh, into Todd County. It is in Todd County. The damaging straight line wind threat is not over for Christian County. The hail threat, not over for Christian County. Pembroke, hail, damaging straight line winds, which means if anything was weakened, you've got extra wind now to help bring that down. Here is a quick look in Hopkinsville. So you, I mentioned that the rotation signature has moved away from here, but clearly the wind's still howling, the rain's still pouring. Uh, this is a look, that storm system, we just got another update, updated sweep here. So we'll continue to take a look at the investigation, and I hate to see these. Um, it's persistent rotation signature. We'll continue to get some reports of damage to that has come into parts of Christian County uh, to buildings and to some structures. At this point, we cannot confirm if that's from the straight line winds or from the possible circulation from this tornado worn storm. That won't be determined until the National Weather Service goes out to survey damage tomorrow. They go out and they're able to view the damage. They're able to see if it was, um, if it's rotational, if the damage is spread out in all different directions, or if it's all laid down in one direction. That's how they confirm whether or not this is straight line wind or whether or not it's rotational wind. So updated look at the biggest concern here. This now has the storm on the southern part of Todd County. So this puts it a little bit closer to the Tennessee border. That helps you get a better sense of where it is. Uh, moving east at 40 miles per hour, but it definitely has a little bit more of a southerly jog to it. Uh, and also some confirmation that within this storm, uh, there are 70 mile per hour winds on the leading edge of it. The National Weather Service uh, keeping the tornado warning for good reason through Todd County, but they have decided to, and let me show this to you, they have decided to extend the warning out ahead of it as a severe thunderstorm warning. So it's a little hard to pick out with all of this stuff on radar. So let me show it to you kind of in a better picture here. 
So clearly an incredibly strong storm system. It has a persistent rotation signature on the south side of Todd County. So this is now northeast of Clarksville. But the National Weather Service has chosen to extend the warning out ahead of it as a severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible. So the thinking there is that the rotation within this has begun to broaden out just a bit, but it's not impossible that it wouldn't tighten back up very quickly. And because the storm is moving so fast at 40 to 50 miles per hour, if this tightens up really quickly, and you're not prepared for it, you're not going to get ample time to take action. So the messaging along this leading edge is don't wait for a warning. You've got the severe thunderstorm warning in place. Same thing for my friends down in Robertson County towards Springfield, for folks in Cheatham County, folks in Dixon County, Montgomery County. Don't wait for a warning. It's coming. It's howling. It's moving at highway speeds, and the wind within it is moving at getting a speeding ticket highway speed 70 miles per hour possible with those storms this extends all the way south so coming out of stewart county i know we've got reports of power outages and trees down in stewart county the main threat is just now drifting a little further to the south so the wind should begin to die down even though the rain's still falling the other thing i'll mention since we're talking about rain is there is a flash flood watch for most of our kentucky counties because they've seen upwards of 10 inches of rain in just the last two weeks uh, and I did notice some flash flood warnings coming out on this as well. They're hard to pick up, but there's some green boxes embedded within here. The short version is if you are anywhere in this storm system, you've got a hail threat, a tornado threat, a wind threat, and a flood threat. Every single possible thing, which means you've got to be in that interior room. You have to be communicating to the people that you know, the people that you love, that this is a storm system not to turn your back at. Hands down, strongest one we've had so far this week. And this is the fourth day this week that we have had an active tornado warning in the News Channel 5 area. It has been an incredibly busy week, and we will continue to have um, storms that even roll through the overnight hours tonight. So don't turn your back, even as we head into the evening hours. National Weather Service has removed Christian County from the tornado warning, but they are maintaining the tornado warning for Todd County for good reason because of the rotation. Uh, unfortunately, that thing has moved, that has slowed down again. So forward motion down to 30 miles per hour. The center of circulation is about 10 miles northeast of Clarksville. So we're going to zoom in really tight, give you an updated look at that. main area of circulation closer to the Guthrie area still so just about 10 miles to the northeast that puts it right near highway 41 hard to pick it out because whatever's out there is clearly rain wrapped but it would be kind of where you see this balling up or this notching uh, that would be where you'd see that indication of the wind wrapping around itself so it's this right here Oftentimes it's difficult here in Tennessee and Kentucky because while we do get supercell thunderstorms, we don't get them the same way that Oklahoma and Kansas does where they're isolated and really easy to pick out on radar. Because this is rain wrapped, it may be hard for you to focus where your eyes are. It's right here. This is the area of concern. So this is near Highway 79. It crossed Interstate 24 about 15, 20 minutes ago. It's moving to the east. So this would put it in a track to take it near Allensville, potentially over towards Highway 102. Uh, and we'll get another storm track. We'll also zoom in real close at street level so you can see some of the neighborhoods and some of the streets that are likely most impacted by this threat. First, we'll go in street level. So near Highway 79, this is near Haydensville. Haydensville, Anderson, talking to you. Down, most interior room. This is not a drill. We've had confirmed reports of damage. Again, I can't, I can't tell you right now if it was rotational damage or straight line damage, but we have had damage from this storm. And I don't want you to be one of the folks um, that suffers that. So I need you to go down into that most interior room, off the roads, let folks know that are in this area. Uh, Sidnab Road, uh, this is right on your doorstep. Old Railroad Lane, right on your doorstep, eventually over towards Haydensville Road. This is north of Hilton Road. The main area of concern for rotation is right here. This is the area that I'm focusing on. So it's just east of 181. And we'll take it in even tighter and get some more streets up here for you so you can really pinpoint where this is. Old Railroad Lane, eventually moving towards Herman Road. And then to put a storm track on this, at least the biggest area of concern, not to say that the 70 mile per hour winds on the other side of this are not presenting their own threat, puts it into Andersonville at 710. Let me update that since we just got an updated scan from the radar. Uh, puts it into just south of Allensville, 
So consider yourself in the path of this. Eventually, Adairville also, 732. Uh, that's outside the scope of the warning for Todd County, but not the warning for Logan County. Again, the National Weather Service choosing to continue this as a severe thunderstorm warning with the, the language that a tornado would be possible. And the concern there is that this would continue to spin up, right? We can see these things spin back up and spin back down. Uh, the tornado warning remains a primary threat because those clearly present the greatest threat to life and to property. But one thing I do want to drive home is the straight line wind threat. On Wednesday, we had straight line winds confirmed in parts of Williamson County of 80 to 85 miles per hour. On Wednesday, we also had a confirmed EF zero tornado not far from this warning in Montgomery County, and it had sustained winds of 80. So you can get stronger straight line wind speed than you can get tornado speed. And the straight line wind threat can often be broader and can bring down more trees, which also means more power lines than uh, a, a rotation can. So don't turn your nose up at something just because it's a straight line wind threat. Uh, I will say that embedded, we talk about this a lot with these rain wrap signatures. The other concern is that when you get rotation like this, so just southwest of Allensville, sometimes the wind, it's, it's called a, uh, the rear flank downdraft. It comes around the back side and this bulging that you're seeing right here, oftentimes you can get a, a tighter rotation signature, so it's a, a smaller tornado, maybe a few hundred yards across, but damaging straight line wind can extend upwards of a thousand meters, perhaps uh, even a little bit longer than that, thousand yards further to the south. So you can get a really long damaging straight line wind threat. You can get trees down all in the same direction, just south of an area where you would have the greatest concern for rotation. Clearly tornadoes, number one priority, number one threat. It's east of Guthrie. It's going to be moving just south of the Allensville area. There is also a, uh, a hail threat with this system, and I want to back it out so I can show you the hail signature inside this storm as well. Really potent stuff. It looks like a black eye out there. So near Elkton, northern parts of Todd County, and I'll even just since we've got it in view here, show you down towards Clarksville because we're keeping an eye on everybody. Uh, we're getting hail signatures upwards of an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. There have been confirmed hailstones upwards of an inch and a half in speed or an inch and a half in size. This is looking at the upper levels of the storm. So what you're seeing on radar is not making it to the ground at quite that size. It's likely two tenths of an inch, maybe three tenths of an inch smaller than that, just because the stones melt as they fall. But this gives you a real indication that if you've got hail that's nearly an inch and three quarters in size being lofted up in the air, that tells you, A, incredibly strong updrafts to be able to support a hailstone of that size. And what goes up? It must come down. So hail is a significant threat all across Todd County. Damaging straight line wind, also a significant threat all across Todd County. The greatest concern for rotation is south of Elkton, in between Elkton and Guthrie. Again, it's looking just a touch broader, but I just say that to tell you what I'm analyzing here, not because the threat is over. It's right here that I'm mostly concerned about. The tornado warning stretches from the Tennessee border to Elkton. There, the warning north of that is for a severe thunderstorm warning, and the hail on this, I mean, it's even hard to pick out the rain and uh, the heavier rain signatures just because there's so much lightning. Uh, not impossible. I'm also keeping an eye here, Todd County, or, or over towards Logan County. There's a tiny little notch there. Every notch doesn't necessarily mean rotation. Sometimes it can just be winds shooting out ahead of it. But this one definitely has had the rotational signature with it. It picked it up as it came out of Trigg County, kept it going as it crossed Interstate 24 through Christian County, put it into Todd County, and we continue with this warning at least until 730 for Todd County. Um, Severe thunderstorm warning, I should let folks know, that are in Christian County. That also remains in effect until 730 because of hail upwards of one and a quarter inch and 70 mile per hour wind. Uh, a note for folks also in Middle Tennessee who might be wondering, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds are being detected across parts of Dixon and Cheatham County. So get into that most interior room. We're likely going to see some trees down. Here's an updated look at that Hopkinsville, uh, our Skynet camera there. You can see conditions rapidly starting to quiet down. One thing you'll notice, the flags, notice how the wind speed rapidly decreasing on the backside of this. Once you're on the backside of the leading edge, your severe threat is over for this round. There is another round that's coming in during the overnight hours. 
um, and that will likely impact folks in the 6 a.m. to noon time frame. And then there's another round that's going to come through tomorrow night between uh, 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. Not the same storm, but it will present a risk for damaging straight line winds. So that's something that you need to be aware of. Updated look at this as we continue to get updated scans that come through from the National Weather Service. Main area of concern now south of Allensville. It's coming right to the Logan County border. Again, Logan County under severe thunderstorm warning. Also, I'm getting some uh, I'm reading reports here from the National Weather Service. That's why you're hearing me kind of pause for a second. Uh, countless reports of trees down across the area. And I expect this to be um, to be something that we hear quite a bit of tonight. So uh, that's tough to see because Tennessee and Kentucky are so beautiful with the trees across our area. But we will see quite a few come down today. Big concern is, uh, is of course, that those trees potentially causing damage to homes or vehicles if they land on them, but power outages. Uh, big time power outages. We had quite a few Wednesday night with straight line winds that came through the area, and that remains a concern here. Quick look at the storm track. Again, this is not, at this point, it is not a tornado warning extending into Logan County, but it's possible that it could be. It is a severe thunderstorm warning. The northern part of it under the gun for heavy rain, wind, and hail. This is mainly on the northern parts of Logan County. The greatest concern for rotation continues to hug the Tennessee border. This is an updated look at the storm timing on that. Put it into Keysburg 722, so that's five minutes. Uh, uh, Emanuel Church 727, 730 is beyond the scope of the warning, but the storm will be there whether or not it has a rotation. Pleasant Grove Church, and you just saw another update come through. So let's move this over just a touch to get an updated look at this. This would take it right along the Tennessee border. Adairville 732 near Brick School, which is uh, near the Adairville area, it's just south. Uh, that would put it right there around 732 as well. Hilltop 738, Lamont at 740. This is a look at the rotation coming out of it. And interesting to note, I mentioned the straight line winds that can often extend on the south side. So we're looking at wind speeds in the upper levels of the storm and we're seeing indications of, let me back this up, the closer you get to the area of concern, if I do some queries on the wind speed in here, really starting to get some very strong speeds. And these are in the upper levels. So it's possible that these would continue even down closer to the surface. Um, reports of trees down, power lines down across Logan County at this point. We've had reports of trees down in Trigg County as well. Reports of trees down. Uh, across Christian County, we've had reports of power out across Stewart County. Uh, so really anyone that is under the gun of this storm is really starting to feel some pretty strong impacts from it. So let's back up just a touch and show you the, the, the breadth of this storm system. National Weather Service now extending. So the severe threat, the rotation signature that has actually just dipped down now into Tennessee, so the tornado warning is in effect for Robertson County until 8 p.m. This is the same rotation that went through Christian, Todd, and Logan County. So quick update for folks in our Kentucky tier. The rotation has dipped south, but the severe thunderstorm threat continues to push east. So Simpson, Allen, Monroe, you see the yellow coloring there, that's a severe thunderstorm warning for you. Now the new tornado warning in effect for Robertson County, that's for the rotation that's just south of the border. We'll zoom in tight on it in just a second. That's until eight o'clock. The severe thunderstorm threat though extends further south than that. I mentioned Cheatham County, Dixon County, uh, some 70 potentially mile per hour winds in that area. We'll get an updated look at the uh, rotation signature that is in Robertson County. So it's just come down. It is this notch that's just, just on the south side of the border. It's right here. So just north of Adams. This is just north of Highway 41. I've said this earlier, I'm gonna say it again. If you are now in Robertson County, since this storm has now crossed state lines and it's in a different area, um, we need to, you need to help communicate this to folks that might be away from their television or may not be aware of the severe threat. This is north of Adams. It's west of Barron Plain. This tornado is moving to the east at 45 miles per hour. At least this tornado warned portion of the storm moving east at 45 miles per hour. We'll put a storm track on that for you. 
it's this territory here, so right along the border. Uh, putting it into Keysburg at 722, Porter's Chapel, 723, Barron Plain around 729, Barron Plain School, clearly same area, 729, and again, Adairville, the, the core concern with this storm is just south of you, but it's awfully close. Uh, and if we, we will continue to see the potential for those spin-ups along the leading edge of this line. So looking at that rotation signature, we were looking at it just a little bit earlier, uh, the, the thing that catches my eye, and this is where, oh, and you just saw another scan come through. So this is moving very, very quickly. You saw it was in this general territory, and there's still some bright green here, so likely some strong winds wrapping around the back side of this. That means Cedar Hill, you're in the path of some very strong straight line winds. The rotation concern is actually just north of the Cedar Hill area, so it's closer to Barron Plain. And it looks like we may have two areas here possibility to come to keep an eye on. We saw this come through in parts of Christian County as well, where there were actually two areas of concern as far as the circulation goes. We'll take a look at the shear signature with this to investigate what it is seeing also. So at this point, it looks like it was starting to pick up on two areas. So one right here, just north of the Cedarville area, and then one uh, closer to Highway 41. Uh, and if we take a look at the rotation signature from the velocity data. So I'm going to say that there are two areas here that are concerns for rotation. Uh, the first one closer to the Kentucky border, it's this territory right here. And then we'll zoom in a little bit tighter at street level. And then the second one here, regardless, we've got strong straight line wind with this. It's possible that some of these are some strong outflows as well, especially with the hailstones and the heavy rain coming down. But we've had a persistent rotation signature for an hour straight now at this point. Uh, so this is definitely a storm that you want to take seriously. And for folks down the road, this is headed towards Sumner County. So folks um, and crossing Interstate 65. So the main component with this storm, there's even that leading cell there that's come into Springfield. This would take it to Barron Plains 724, so that's a minute, uh, putting it near Cross Plains at 737, White House 740, Portland 745, South Tunnel right around 750. We'll zoom in tight to take a look. I promise the street level. So there is a thunderstorm that's generated near Springfield. This is not where the concern for rotation is. The concern for rotation on the back side of this doesn't mean that that cell in front may not begin to rotate. But that's not my greatest area of concern. So the biggest concern is um, north of Cedar Hill, west of Barron Plain, near Buzzard Creek Road. So coming over as we take a look at these streets, and I'll take it even tighter so you can get a really good sense of the neighborhoods this is in. Anderson Road, Buzzard Creek Road, over towards Pfizer Road, Jones Chapel Road, Drake Road, and you just saw another update here. So it looks like we're starting to get some of that notching, even diving just a little bit further to the south. But on the back side of this, that's likely where you would have the greatest threat for some hail, as well as some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds, especially as that rain gets dragged down with it. You often see signatures, um, you often see those really strong wind gusts when you get very heavy rain coming down to the surface. So we saw that, um, we saw the new sweep come through. We're looking at the National Weather Service out of Nashville and looking at the, the shear tracks with this, looking at the rotation signature. Yeah, the greatest concern is right near the Barren Plain area. So it's up near Buzzard Creek Road, near Pfizer Road, Jones Chapel Road, eventually moving towards Barren Plain, Corbin Sneed, just north of North Wilson Road, south of Wayman Dunn, Another update here. So the rotation looks like it's starting to broaden out just a little bit, uh, but not necessarily lifting since this, we still have the warning. So don't put your guard down with this. Just south of Barren Plain, near Mount Denson, north of Springfield would be the greater concern. So I'm talking this territory right here is the bigger area of concern for rotation within this system. That tornado warning remains in effect until 8 o'clock tonight. I want to show you a bigger, broader picture of this storm system because while I am keeping an eagle eye on this tornado warning, we're getting a lot of reports in now of power out across the area. And while the lightning signature may grab your eyes and clearly the tornado warning first, down on the south side of this, we're getting reports of power outs across Dixon County. We had reports of power out across Stewart County. Uh, incredibly strong wind speeds around 70 miles per hour detected by radar 
in Cheatham County, Dixon County, Montgomery County, down towards Houston and Humphreys County. So the straight line wind threat, even though there isn't as much lightning, it is absolutely persisting on the backside of this. This storm system is not going to fall apart. It will likely maintain severe strength or at least near severe strength the entire journey across Tennessee tonight. It is not going to be out of the News Channel 5 viewing area until around 10 o'clock midnight tonight. The tornado warning is for Robertson County. Right now it's on the north side of Robertson County. It's on the northeast side, so just about 10 miles east of Interstate 24. That storm moving to the east at 45 miles per hour. We'll zoom in a little bit tighter and get a, a good look at this as well. But I also just wanted folks broad picture to know what's going on, especially since so many are being impacted by trees down and power outages and the hail that's falling across the area. The most significant lightning threat clearly in Kentucky and that severe thunderstorm warning now extends into Allen County. So this will march its way all the way through Cumberland and Clinton County as we head into the evening hours. The warning just now on the northeastern edge, severe thunderstorm warning on the north eastern edge, northwestern edge of Davidson County. This will be pushing into Nashville within the next 30 minutes. Again, you know someone downtown or near that 6524 split, they need to know to wait to head outside. Um, 70 mile per hour winds being detected in Robertson County area. Uh, severe thunderstorms are defined as winds with 58 mile per hour wind speed, and these are clearly outdoing themselves with 70 mile per hour wind speeds possible in parts of our area. Uh, to take a quick look at some of our sky cams as well, because some of these are looking north, some of these are looking south. This is a westerly looking sky cam. This is looking north. So this is looking north towards the 6524 split. This is uh, where that storm is moving towards. So the view that you have on your screen the storm in question would be coming in from the left, at least as far as how you're looking at this, uh, because it would be coming in from the north and northwest. And as we pan over, you can see how visibility clearly uh, harder the further out you go. That's because that's where the heavier rain is falling. Uh, that's where the strongest winds are now beginning to work in as well. This is where the tornado warning is beginning to move towards since that tornado warning is for Robertson County. Uh, I'm taking a tour of some of our other sky cams across the area as well to take a look at what things look like visually. Let me pull that up for you. So this is what it looks like in Clarksville. The strongest uh, wind speeds and the strongest part of the storm now through Clarksville. You can see that in part because of the temperature down to 69. So some rain cooled air there. The severe threat decreasing significantly for parts of Hopkinsville uh, in Christian County, parts of Clarksville. Unfortunately, it is not decreasing for folks in central parts of Rutherford County. Uh, widespread wind damage remains the primary overall threat as we head into the evening hours tonight. But we mentioned that the tornado threat was low, not zero. And sure enough, that's what we're seeing tonight. So significant thunderstorm perking up near the Springfield area before we get a good look at the uh, an updated look at radar and rotation. I want to give you another updated look at hail because man, oh man, is that signature picking up just south of Springfield, an inch to an inch and a quarter possible. The bigger concern uh, is, of course, the rotation signature with that. I'll let you know the National Weather Service did drop. Todd County up in Kentucky from that tornado warning, the threat over there as far as rotation, uh, as far as the concern for rotation, doesn't mean we couldn't see some additional spin ups, but the only concern we have for a rotating thunderstorm is um, just west now of the Springfield area. It's actually just northwest. We'll zoom in for some streets because I know this is a real densely populated area, a lot of neighborhoods. So it's this territory right here. So in the Mount Denson area, you see the heavier rain signature kind of coming around, almost looks a little bit like a ball. This is the most likely location. So near Highway 41, where we would be getting that indication of rotation. As this moves, potentially impacting Highway 431, 49, taking it into the eastern parts of Robertson County. And then whether or not it maintains its rotational signature, the severe threat will move into Sumner County. So that is the next one on the list as far as who's in the path of the biggest concern here. We'll do a storm track. We'll take it to street level. Uh, in Eden Corner 741 Cross Plains, 744 White House. This is coming to your doorstep in about 20 minutes. Uh, Cummings Crossroad 754 Portland 757. Portland, I mentioned 757, South Tunnel 802, the National Weather Service now issuing severe thunderstorm warnings for Cheatham, 
Davidson, Macon, Robertson, Rutherford, Sumner, Trousdale, and Wilson. I, I expect this to happen all night long. They're going to warn the whole line. Uh, so a quick view of that, and then we'll take it in to street level. So you see how that, just an entire line, extending from Bowling Green all the way down to Denton County, down towards uh, Perry County, over towards Hohenwald. So let's take it in really tight. Bigger concern now, folks in Springfield, this is incredibly close to your doorstep. It's just on the north side of town. So this is near the Mount Denson area. Taking it into street level, this is near Highway 41, North Old Highway 41, TH Minnis Road, most interior room. If you live on that or near it, I'm talking to you. Take your phone, get down into that interior room. You can stream us live. We're on Facebook as well uh, on the News Channel 5 app. You can take that information with you. Uh, Boyd. Holland Road as well, Hugh Woodard Road, Padfield Road. These are all uh, in this general area where we're seeing the concern for rotation with this tornado warning that remains in effect until 8 o'clock. Here's another look at the rotation signature. Also, very strong wind speeds with this. So the bright green pixels, look at that. We're looking uh, elevated within the storm, but that's now upwards of 70 miles per hour. Uh, the storm system has picked up its forward speed also. The area of concern near Springfield moving east at 50 miles per hour. That is highway speeds. I know some folks drive faster than that, but that is bona fide highway speeds. Updated storm track takes this right towards Interstate 65 within the next 15 minutes. It's critical if you knew someone driving on an interstate to let them know not to drive into this. Eden Corner 739, Cross Plain 743, White House 746, more reports of trees down across the area in parts of Humphreys County. Taking this down, Springfield, downtown Springfield. I, I, I imagine the sound outside your home is just incredible howling wind, pounding rain, hail likely anywhere from a quarter of an inch to potentially even just a touch larger than that. Uh, Here's a look at some of the streets there. 8th Avenue East, Bill Jones Industrial Drive, South Main Street, uh, Curtiswood Lane, Driftwood Drive, all of this moving to the east. This is where we have the strongest indication of not just a rotational wind speed, but potentially straight line winds as well, making it down to the surface. I showed you some of the winds earlier, upwards of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Those get dragged down to the surface by those very strong straight line winds and that's where we get the big indication that we could have um, some significant straight line wind damage. Look at the wind shear signature with this. This is, it doesn't always mean uh, that we uh, are seeing rotation, but often when we get a shear signature that fans out. So notice how this was, it almost looked like dots, then it started to get broader. That was as that rotation signature picked up. This was just northwest of Springfield. Now the strongest shear being located across Springfield and the signature is broader, right? So it almost looks like someone is making a larger striking motion if you were drawing with a crayon and that that's, it's fanning out, it's getting larger. Usually when we have confirmed tornadoes, this is also the signature that we would see. So I don't need to see this to believe that this is a big concern. Uh, we've seen this rotation ongoing now for over an hour, an hour and 15 minutes as it came out of Todd County. Uh, it is just now moved east of Springfield, still some straight line wind concerns uh, in downtown Springfield at this point. Next in line though is Cross Plains, Interstate 65, White House. Uh, north side of Goodlitzville, probably getting in on some incredibly strong straight line winds as well. The rotation signature, though, looks to track just north. It's got a southeasterly jog to it, uh, but it's definitely got more of an easterly component as far as the rotational threat within this storm. So it's where the notching is. Gets a little muddy because now that storm is catching up to that pop-up storm that was ahead of it. So this area right here is a pop-up storm that came up near Cross Plains. This on the back side where Springfield is, that's where the rotation is. The darker red embedded within this rain that would be the greater concern where you would see the rotation just out ahead of it, just on the east side of it. As it collides with the storm ahead of it, that can muddy these systems. The inflows, the updrafts, the downdrafts, any way you slice it, you don't want to be outside. You don't want to be on the road. And if there's someone that you know or have access to contacting, tell them to get to that lowest, most interior room. This is an incredibly strong storm system. 
It's just now getting towards the northern parts of Davidson County. 60 to 70 mile per hour winds on the leading edge of this system. And you got to think on Wednesday, all of the strong storms that we had with straight line winds, all that did was weaken uh, trees, potentially even some power lines across the area. And so now if you've got 60 to 70 mile per hour, 60 to 70 mile per hour wind coming on the back side of it, it's not going to take much to knock some weakened structures down. Notice the, the lightning signature also beginning to extend further south now into uh, Tennessee. So on the Tennessee side, we're now in Robertson County. This is just about to cross uh, into Sumner County. 60 to 70 mile per hour winds being uh, indicated by radar across Robertson County at this point, especially near the Springfield area. I mentioned that that can often be a byproduct with some of these circulations that spin up. In the most interior part of it, the bigger concern, right, is the rotation, but the downdraft that gets wrapped around the circulation can cause large areas of straight line wind to extend on the bottom. And you can actually sometimes get more damage from the swath of straight line wind that extends further south of the area of rotation than actually within that rotation. So that means even if you're just south of the Springfield area or south of Eden Corner, if you're near Cortland, this is in your doorstep. Clearly, you can see the strongest core of this thunderstorm now beginning to move toward Eden Corner. This takes it right towards Interstate 65, just south of the Cross Plains area, potentially crossing Interstate 65 if the rotation signature can hold together and taking it into Sumner County. That tornado warning in effect until 8 o'clock tonight. Lots of reports coming in from the National Weather Service of uh, power out across parts of Dixon County, parts of Robertson County, uh, and unfortunately we continue to see some of those those trees come down in parts of the area. Rory, I think that um, you may have some additional information on some damage that's been reported tonight. Yeah, Bree, we do. Uh, obviously, this is a serious situation, and this is a great photo right here uh, sent to us a few minutes ago. Uh, this is in Clarksville at Tiny Town Road, you can see the storms up in the air, up in the sky there. Also, as this storm line approaches downtown Nashville in the Nashville metro area, we want to let you know that the outdoor concert over to Sand Amphitheater, Billy Eilish, ha has been uh, evacuated tonight ahead of severe storms. Just uh, they want to be cautious because of the lightning. There's so much lightning with it. You mentioned some of the outages, the storm outages. We're told in Montgomery County, almost 6,000 customers are without power right now. In Stewart County, it's up to about uh, 2,500 uh, folks there. And we're getting word here. We got a, a number of, of pictures coming in that we're going to share with you. My5 at newschannel5.com is where you want to send those photos. Of course, we want you to be safe. Don't go out to take photos or videos in this severe weather right now. Um, Again, we also have some video that we're going to upload to show you, but the Billie Eilish concert down, uh, at Ascend Amphitheater, I think it was a smart move that they canceled, canceled that at least temporarily delayed it and evacuated folks so that they could get to a safe area because there's so much mm -hmm. lightning uh, with this storm. We're going to keep tracking it. There you go. There's a great shot from our sky cam right now. It looks fine right now, but obviously we know what's on its way. So they're going to get people out of there and uh, to safe locations. Bree. So unfortunately, we have another tornado warning that's just been issued by the National Weather Service. This is again on the Kentucky side. That's where we started, unfortunately, with this threat tonight. This tornado warning in effect for Allen, Simpson and Warren County. This is in effect until 815. Uh, it's uh, the notch is on the northern part of Allen County. I'll show it to you in just a second. But I also want folks to know in Robertson County that you remain under a tornado warning until eight o'clock. So let's go investigate this newest warning seeing that real clear notch. So this is right on the northeastern side of Simpson County. So if you are in Franklin, torrential rain, some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds, incredibly dangerous, but it's this right here. That's the concern for rotation. So this is now beginning to cross over into Allen County. It gets a little muddied when we're this tight, but this line right here is the county border. And so right near 265, headed towards halfway. That's the biggest concern for rotation with this new tornado warning that's in effect until 815. So we'll take a look at the shear signature on that and then we will hop down across the border and get an updated look at the Robertson County storm. Sure enough, that looks pretty tight 
as far as a radar signature to me. So this is uh, north of McCleary Ford. It's right on the border. So south of Drake, near Temperance, moving to the northeast. This one moving at 45 miles per hour. So the storms have begun to pick up some forward momentum as far as their speed goes. Put a storm track on this for you. Puts it at near Antioch Church at 742. Puts it at Beach Grove Church at 744. Halfway at 747. Uh, putting it into Halifax School or near Hal, ha, uh, sorry, halfway. Halfway School and then near Halifax. 748 for Halfway School, 752 for Halifax, 752, same thing for Liberty Church. So this again, another, another area of rotation that has popped up on the leading edge of this storm system. I mentioned earlier, because I'll say it, even if you're not in the immediate path of that, folks south need to be aware of the damaging straight line wind threat that often wraps around the backside of these circulations. So areas that I just circled, so that would take it towards Adolphus, eventually towards Scottsville as well. Scottsville, you're actually the north side of town. You are in this tornado warning until 815. The warning does include Simpson County, but the greatest area of concern is on the northeast side. So if you're in Franklin or if you're in the western parts of uh, Simpson County, uh, your bigger threat is actually straight line wind and the possibility of hail. Uh, we'll hop down and get an updated look at the Robertson County storm. That tornado warning, warning remains in effect until 8 o'clock. Straight line wind, a threat all across the county. And we're actually just now getting reports of nearly an 80 mile per hour wind speed across parts of Robertson County. Hail has been indicated upwards of one and a quarter inch. That will wreck vehicles. Really important to the signature starting to come. The severe signature, I should say, not the tornadic signature is beginning to work into downtown. So we'll get an updated look at this. We'll take a look at some sky cams and then get another look at the entire breadth of this line because it is packing a real significant punch. The greatest concern for rotation now is just northeast of Ridgetop. It's just east, east northeast of Greenbrier. I'll put a, um, a locator on it. It's right here. This is the bigger area of concern. So this is just west of White House. It's moving incredibly fast. I've mentioned this earlier today. These storms are moving at highway speed, and it's so tempting in severe weather. Folks want to see things. They want to go out and get a look at it. You wouldn't stand on the interstate and stare down a vehicle going highway speed, so don't do this. You're not going to see it. It's rain-wrapped. You're not going to get visual confirmation here. The rain is clearly much broader than the area of rotation, but that area of rotation has been persistent, uh, and it has been um, enough that they've kept the warning going for quite some time now. Mount Pleasant School, 744, this is near you. White House, you've got five minutes. That means now. If you haven't taken action yet, grab the phone, get down to that most interior room, closets, crawl spaces under stairwells, interior bathrooms. You just want to put walls, as many walls as you can between you and the outside world in that lowest, most interior room. New reports of power out in Jolton, Ashland City, and Dixon. Uh, the concern of rotation remains, unfortunately, right now starting to approach Interstate 65. And there is a, um, an added element of danger when you get possible rotations crossing interstates. That's what we almost had Wednesday as we had that storm come out of Montgomery County. Uh, thankfully, that storm lifted before it crossed the interstate, but it is possible uh, that we may still have some rotation on the ground here. It's this area of concern here. I'll zoom in just a little bit tighter to give you some street level indication of what we're talking about. Jones Road, Poplar Ridge Road, South Swift Road, Cycle Lane, Darby Road, Skyline Drive. These are all the biggest concerns as to where this rotation signature is. Significant power outages now being reported across the area. We're going to back out and take a bigger look at this line of storm since it is packing such a punch and is really just battering Middle Tennessee and parts of Kentucky. So here's the broad look. We have two tornado warnings, and then we have a wall of severe thunderstorm warnings. That first tornado warning, or the northernmost warning, it's on the eastern edge of Simpson. This county right here is Allen County. So this warning is moving into northern parts of Allen County. That's in effect until 815. 
out ahead of it. Severe thunderstorm warnings now for Sumner County, Wilson County, Davidson County, uh, Rutherford County, Williamson County, northern parts of Murray County, uh, Hickman County as well. Significant power outages reported through Jolton, through Ashland City, through Dixon, through Stewart County, even as the storms came through earlier. I will tell you sometimes it's, it's, it's valuable to know who's in the clear. If you're on the back side of this, so Clarksville, Stewart County, Houston County, Benton County, Henry County, Christian County, Todd County, behind the label here, your severe threat is over. Now, it's still raining and there's still a concern for weakened trees, branches, power lines could still be out or down outside of your home, so there's a threat there. You certainly don't want to come near them. The flooding threat is also there as well as this rain continues to accumulate. So main concerns for tornadoes are northern parts of Allen County, coming out of Robertson County into Sumner County. The strongest part of this storm is actually now starting to push towards Davidson County. So this is downtown Nashville. We'll take a quick look at some of our sky cams. And then uh, we have some video that I want to share with you as well. So this is a look at uh, Clarksville. This is where they had to evacuate a concert. And you can see traffic slammed there. Here is a shot in Nashville. This is, oh, you can see that lightning really starting to pick up. So you see the Batman building off to the right. Really strong lightning signature with all of these storms. That was part of the reason why the concert had to be evacuated. A tornado and 70 mile per hour winds. You certainly can't be outside in that either. This is looking due north. That looks pitch black. That is the storm. So you're looking near where um, 24 curves off to the northwest and 65 splits off to the right. So that's the Cumberland just coming through downtown. Uh, if you were to pan this to the right, you would be looking more towards Sumner County, but you pan it to the left, and that's where you see just this wall of water coming down. Incredibly heavy rain. We've got um, countless uh, power outage reports across there. You can see that low-hanging cloud on the leading edge, too. That is a shelf cloud, so that's indicative of those really strong straight-line winds. I don't see any... Uh, lowering of it within the center or rotation, but it doesn't mean it's not there. I believe we have some video as well. Aaron, tell me what we have. We may not have that just yet, so let's let's take a closer look at uh, this really striking image. So the the camera, the iris of the camera is illuminated just fine. The storm is just so potent that it's essentially blotting out the sun here. Heaviest rain is now crossing towards. Um, it's crossing Interstate 65, so it's moving into Sumner County. We'll take a look at that in just a second. This low-hanging cloud here, that is a shelf cloud. You saw some power flashes off in the back there as well. That may have been a lightning strike. It's hard to tell if that was a lightning strike or potentially a power flash. What happens is the wind getting dragged down in the center here, it shoots out ahead of the storm, and that causes warm, moist air to rise above it. And as that warm, moist air rises above it, it condenses at a lower level than the clouds embedded within the center of the storm. And so that's what creates these long, low-hanging clouds across the area. If, you, if there was a, a lowering of one, one component of it, that would be considered a wall cloud. Wall clouds are associated with tornadoes. We would not be able to visually identify that tonight because of the amount of rain. Whatever rotation is there is rain wrapped. It's not visually identifiable. Don't go looking for it. You're not going to get a picture of it. We're not going to catch it on Skycam. What we are catching on Skycam is this shelf cloud. Eventually, this whole camera is going to be washed out as this comes into downtown. You saw that lightning signature where the darkest part of your screen is. It almost looks like the cloud is connected down to the ground. It's not. This is rain that's connecting down to the ground here. But significant amounts of lightning with the storm system as well. And, it, and notice, as we've been talking through this, the haze, sort of the fuzz on the back that you would see or just reduced visibility, that's the rain. That is rain. That is a wall of water that's coming into downtown uh, within the downtown area in the next 10 minutes. Some good news, the National Weather Service canceling the tornado warning for Robertson County. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't mean that this storm is not still packing a significant punch. Simpson County up in Kentucky has also been removed from the tornado warning, but we remain under a tornado warning for the northern parts of Allen County. This is in effect until 815. So we'll get a tour of these storms uh, so that you can see a better sense of where the storms are and where they're going next. We start with the tornado warning. This is northern parts of Allen County. So this puts it in the Scottsville area greatest area of concern 
is uh, actually just west, just southwest of Scottsville. So it's this area right here. So it's just about in between Scottsville and Adolphus. This is right along 231. This is racing off to the northeast. So we'll get an updated look at the storm track. We'll take it down to street level as well so folks in this area know what they're dealing with. West Fork 752, Scottsville 757, Austin 810, Tracy 813, Cooktown 816. And we'll take this down to street level so you can get a good sense of, um, of the neighborhoods that are in the area where the greatest rotation would be. Folks in Scottsville, this is on your doorstep. So get down to that lowest, most interior room. Old State Road, Lambert Road, uh, Mitchell Road. You just saw another update come through. So this is near Red Hill and Scottsville. It's kind of on the southern part of this morning, uh, just near the halfway area. That's where the greatest concern for rotation is with this storm system. And it is coming down as we come down into street level. 231, this is near 265, so again, just in between Red Hill and Scottsville. Now, we continue to see significant power outages stretch, and I want to get an update for folks in Sumner County from that storm that came out of Robertson County. It's damaging straight line winds, 70 and 80 mile per hour winds that are the biggest concern. It is coming down in Portland. Leading edge of this now in the central parts of Sumner County. Uh, Hendersonville, right north of Main Street, that's where the heaviest, hardest Part of the storm is falling at this point. Goodlettsville, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. This is starting to move into the 65-24 split just north of downtown. Downtown Nashville getting slammed with heavy rain as well. Here is another look at that sky cam. So this was the same sky cam we were looking at just a couple minutes ago. And you can already see, you, you can't even see um, the, the mountains up to the north side of this, the hills, because the rain that has come down so strong and so hard. This is coming into downtown. It's going to be downtown in the next 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, NES reporting power outages, upwards of 5,600 people. There are other power outages reported across the area, across parts of Stewart County, Ashland City, Jolton. You see lightning strikes coming into Sumner County as well. This is another shot, but it's so dark that it's hard to pick that out. You can see the wind still howling. Uh, near the Clarksville area as well. So this is a look at that sky cam looking northward. And I'm looking at some of our other um, Skynet cameras that we have as well, so I can give you some better views of what's happening. This is a good shot. So this is, this is Gallatin. So the strongest part of the storm is just now starting to work towards you. A lot of folks driving around the square. If you know one of those people, give them a call. Don't text them because I don't want you to text and drive, but give them a call uh, and let them know that strong to severe storms are moving in their area. This is a look at First Tennessee Park. So First Tennessee Park is looking towards the Batman building so that this sky cam looking north, this is where the storm is coming from. This view is looking uh, almost towards, if you could see past beyond the buildings, just on the left-hand side of your screen would be Nissan Stadium would be East Nashville. So the right hand side of your screen would be uh, the western part of downtown. So you're kind of looking south, southeast. You're looking towards the high rises. You can see the Batman building there and you can see how visibility really starting to change quickly in that area. Uh, I had our Franklin camera pulled up and I want to try to pull that up for you as well. So here's a live shot in Franklin, Interstate 65. Dark clouds on the horizon there. The worst of the storm has not arrived, but it is very, very close. Uh, 50 to 70 mile per hour winds likely beginning to move into the downtown area, into the Nashville area, specifically on the western part, that severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 815. That's the same thing for the tornado warning in northern parts of Allen County. The southern flank of this coming into Williamson County, the worst part of the storm now on the southern border of Cheatham County, and northern parts, northwestern parts of Williamson County. So I'm talking about right here between Kingston Springs and Fairview. So travel along I-40 out of town towards Memphis, it's, it's dangerous, it's unpleasant. 60, 70 mile per hour winds, hail upwards of an inch to an inch and a quarter. We'll take a look at the hail signature, an updated look at it. The worst of this, as far as Davidson goes, you just saw another updated scan come in. This area right here, well, it doesn't have as much lightning as areas north did. 50 to 70 mile per hour winds with this, and it's coming into downtown. 
So this extends down I-40. Tell me again, Jason. Say one more time. Okay, we've got um, a shot of a send that we're going to take. Let's take a look at it. Man, you can really start to see the rain coming down there. So uh, this, and you can hear, this is the camera on top of the Batman building, I believe is the one we're looking at, uh, looking down at Ascend. So this is one of the tallest buildings that we have. And what you're hearing is the rain. You're hearing the wind. You're hearing the storm that is just now starting to approach. This isn't even the worst of it. You can also see traffic, unfortunately, looks slammed. Uh, coming into downtown, it always looks slammed, right? Um, folks on the road, they are getting really um, the worst of this. I would encourage, if you know someone that's on the road, to really try to pull over, uh, get into that interior structure. If you can't get into interior structure, if you ever find yourself in a storm, that's warned and you cannot get into an interior uh, area, you want to leave the vehicle on and you want to um, make sure your seatbelt is still fastened so that the airbags are still functional. Uh, you can crouch down in the seat, you can put your arms over your head and you want to try to seek shelter that way if that's the worst possible case scenario. Clearly you don't want to get out in the middle of a severe thunderstorm, especially one like this. So I promised that we would take a look at the hail signature and I want to do that because that has been um, significant for our area today. Backing it out, you can see how some folks really, it almost looks like a black eye in certain parts of our area. Largest hail, this is hail over the last 15 minutes. So just because you don't see something across Christian, uh, Trigg, parts of Stewart, Montgomery County, there was significant hail across that area today. This is just the hail uh, seen by radar in the last 15 minutes. And the purples, especially across parts of Robertson County and now coming into northern parts of Sumner County, northern parts of Davidson County. That's a half inch. The purple would indicate hail as large as an inch to an inch and a quarter, potentially even an inch and a half. So severe thunderstorm warnings now extend uh, just to the western edge of Macon County, Trousdale County. This is towards Wilson County, Mount Juliet. Eventually this is coming into Lebanon, Murfreesboro. It's about an hour away from you. I'll show you storm track in just a second, but just to walk you through the warnings and the hail signature here. Not seeing as much hail across parts of Williamson County at this point, but I expect that that would likely change. And then as we extend further to the south, uh, that hail signature is starting to pick up as well. The other thing to note, I mentioned earlier, the power outages around 6,000. Now they're up to 15,000, and that's just NES. That's not some of the other um, utility providers across the area. We've seen significant um, power outage reports across the area. Uh, we have, this is another look at the tornado warning that remains ongoing for Allen and Warren County. And uh, this is on the northern part. We're going to get an update on this. And then I believe we've got a shot we can take uh, outside. This is a live shot uh, right on the front of News Channel 5. Uh, so this is on James Robertson Parkway. This is not far from First Tennessee Park. That view I showed you on our Skynet camera. Rain pouring. Wind whipping the trees around. And the worst of it is not here yet. I would say 30 to 40 mile per hour winds have made it into downtown. We expect 50 to 70 mile per hour winds to work into downtown shortly. So um, real concern for um, conditions to deteriorate in the next 20 minutes as far as what we're seeing downtown. Here's another look uh, on our Franklin Skynet camera of some low clouds as the leading edge of those storms inch closer and closer to Williamson County. This is a look at our Skynet camera just so that's looking south. This is looking north, incredibly heavy rain, uh, now blanketing the area. So visibility continuing to drop. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning continue widespread across this line. Uh, I say that because I was just getting an update from the National Weather Service. So this live look north, again, this is 65-24 split. So you see the Cumberland River kind of cut through the middle of that screen. Pouring rain, howling wind. Can we take the Batman building or the camera looking at Ascend as well, Jason, so we can get a sense of what it sounds like outside? We're going to get that next camera. This one has a microphone on it. So this is a very sturdily mounted camera, I will tell you as well. So to see it shaking this much, that takes incredibly strong winds. Now winds are higher, the higher winds are faster, the higher up you go. So the fact that this is on top of the Batman building means it is experiencing the strongest winds that are in downtown right now. And to see it shaking, that's a potent punch. 
Now, an update as far as the severe warnings across the area. The tornado warning remains in effect through 815, and I expect that the National Weather Service is going to let that storm run its course. At least that, I'm sorry, I sh should let that warning run its course. Extending further out now to the east, the National Weather Service choosing to continue that warning as a severe thunderstorm warning. This includes Monroe County, that's Tompkinsville on your screen there. Uh, Tracy, uh, that's uh, parts of Barron County and Metcalf County. So in credit, and you just saw that they filled that in. So severe thunderstorm warning, no, not surprised there. This whole leading edge is what they're warning on. Eventually that'll come into Cumberland and Clinton County as well. So Glasgow, that's right around 801. That's 30 seconds. Summer shade, 817. Tompkinsville, 822. Putting into the Columbia Dare area around 826. The rotation signature has decreased significantly with this storm, but they're gonna hold that warning at least for the next 15 minutes. The main area of concern now east of Scottsville so I'll let you know that the straight line wind threat continues just north of the border in Kentucky, but on the back side of this, so if you're west of Scottsville, the tornado threat now over here, Adolphus tornado threat over, but lots of lightning, the potential for hail, damaging straight line wind. Uh, you can see more power outages now on the bottom of the screen. I'm seeing those numbers come in 12,000 now. So the main threat is on the east side of Scottsville and it is moving to the east at 45 miles per hour. We'll put a storm track on that and then get an updated look at the storms that are now swinging all across Interstate 65 and then down Interstate 40. This is a look at the storm track for the area of concern in Allen County. We just looked at one. Here's an updated look. But I do want folks south of this to get a good sense of what's happening as well. So uh, Gallatin down towards Hendersonville, the strongest part of the storm, now pushing into that area as well. Incredibly heavy rain. I pulled up, uh, I'm working on pulling up our uh, Gallatin, Gallatin Skynet camera as well so that I can get you a good look of that. But you need to plan on pretty much all of Sumner County is now blanketed. Interstate 65 from the Kentucky border, stretching south. It's, it's a mess. You've still got 40, 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts there. The strongest wind speeds are likely now coming into Gallatin, in between Gallatin and Hendersonville, so right along Main Street. It's, um, and then stretching just north there towards the Station Camp Creek area. So right here is what I'm talking about as being the strongest straight line winds. Here is what it looks like in Gallatin. So you're looking north, clearly the dark area in the upper left-hand portion of your screen. Uh, that's where the strongest storms are starting to come in. And just look how dark it is compared to areas east. Temperature also a good indication, 84, so rain and rain-cooled air have not made it there yet. And look how quiet the trees are. That's going to look entirely different in the next 15 minutes or so. Stretching south, the worst of this is now into downtown. So the strongest straight-line wind, the hail or the lightning signature has decreased somewhat for downtown. That's good news. If, if folks were stuck outside, but we're still looking at 50 to 70 mile per hour wind coming through downtown Nashville. Are we able to take the shot that we have in front of News Channel 5? Let's go ahead and take that so we can get a shot, especially since the heaviest of it is coming through downtown at this point. Uh, trees, you can see the branches moving there, really starting to sway. And for those that don't, don't know, if you haven't been to News Channel 5, um, our building is fairly, uh, it has a, a, a wide footprint, so the trees that are immediately next to us, you wouldn't see as much movement potentially on the lower levels, but the ones that are on the center median of James Robertson, you can really see how those are getting knocked back and forth. That's those stronger wind speeds starting to make it down. You see the rain coming down, the lightning signature not as prevalent uh, downtown as it has been. Unfortunately, your sirens in the background as well. I'm sure a lot of folks needing help tonight. Uh, from these storms, from trees down, from power outages, um, and from the damage reports that we continue to see pour in uh, from the National Weather Service. Um, wind gusts have been confirmed as, as strong as 73 miles per hour in parts of our area today. So that's what it looks like downtown. Let's take it back to radar so we can show you where the core of the strongest storm is and where it's going. So extending east, since the storm is now starting to cross over into parts of Wilson County over towards Mount Juliet and towards Lebanon. Um, 
you know, looking at the radar is, is you know, clearly this is where we visually see where these storms are. Castilian Springs down towards Gallatin, down towards Hendersonville. The worst of it lifting out of uh, the downtown part of Hendersonville. Goodlettsville conditions should be improving pretty quickly, even though there's a lot of lightning there. The strongest wind speeds should be just north of you. One thing I will point out is that the National Weather Service's radar is just across the lake from Hendersonville. It's closer to the Hermitage area. And it looks like the storms that are immediately around this radar are not as strong. You're not seeing the reds and the purples. That's misleading. When the radar beam comes out, it comes out at a certain elevation. And the way the radar beam works is it comes out, it goes all the way around, it sends that data back. And then it goes up a half a degree, goes all the way around, data comes back, comes up a half a degree. It does this through about 19 scans. The problem is the radar can't look straight up. It gets it maxes out at a certain elevation, which means when it comes around, there is a cone directly above it that it cannot see. And so oftentimes when you are looking or when I'm showing you radar of storms that are approaching downtown and then coming out of Nashville or near Hendersonville or near Mount Juliet, it looks like they might not be packing the same punch. And it's just because the radar can't see that part of the storm. It's only seeing the lower third or the lower half of the storm. That's part of the reason why you notice the further away it gets, even up towards Castilian Springs, parts of Trousdale County, the storms almost look like, oh, they perked back up. They never perked down. We just stopped being able to see the top parts of them. So likely some very strong winds around Hermitage, around Old Hickory, coming towards Mount Juliet, eventually towards Lebanon as well. I'll work on pulling that Skynet camera for you. Also seeing a few, or at least a handful of storms just south of the Nashville area, closer to Smyrna. Uh, these are ahead of the main line, but they are perking up in intensity. Uh, the worst of it starting to push out of Nashville, the back side of this. Likely still some 30 mile per hour winds. Most of that because the rain is dragging it down to the surface, but not the same um, uh, interior strength of the storm as we saw earlier. So backing it out so you can kind of see what's coming down the pipeline because we got to look at who's getting hit now and who's getting hit next. So the strongest part of this storm is coming through Williamson County, Franklin. You are likely getting just hammered from this at this point. Uh, I'll pull up that Skynet camera as well so we can get an updated look at what that looks like for you. Here's what it looks like coming through Franklin. So yeah, clearly raining much harder there. You see this is also a very firmly mounted camera. So to see it shaking just a little bit is indicative of just how strong the wind speeds are associated with this storm system. I mentioned storms. We'll take another look at some of these sky cameras here. So that's a look at Franklin along Interstate 65. Gallatin, do you remember how it looked fine and quiet just a moment ago, and now it's nearly blackout conditions because of the storms coming through. Again, this is another very sturdily mounted camera. So to see it shaking, it's not a camera that we see shaking very often. It says something. You know, oftentimes our cameras at First Tennessee Park, if the fans are jumping up and down in the stands, you can get some shaking there. But this is solely wind, solely wind and rain. And then a totally different story in Hopkinsville where the severe threat is over. Now, this is a shot, uh, another shot in Nashville from our Skynet camera, a different view than the one looking north. And amazing how dark the skies look from these, these different vantage points. Uh, tell me again, Jason, we have a TDOT camera that we're gonna show. Briley and Lebanon Pike. So let's take a look. Wow, look at that light show on the back side of that. So this is uh, one of our TDOT cameras, so another view of what's happening and it really you know, ominous skies in the background for uh, a whole lot of folks across the area we need to take it back to radar. So we have another tornado warning. This one now issued for southern parts of Davidson County. So heads up for folks near the Smyrna area. This is, uh, this is the storm system that was coming out of downtown. I mentioned how the radar oftentimes not seeing the center or, or, or highest parts of the storm systems. This is a similar territory. So we have two new warnings that are coming in. This tornado warning is for Davidson, Rutherford, and Wilson County until 845. Uh, the tornado located near Rural Hill, about 14 miles southeast of Nashville, and it's moving east at 45 miles per hour. There is another storm I'm going to tell you. We're going to focus on this one first. We've got to do one at a time. Um, uh, there's another warning that is just now coming out for Macon County. So folks in Macon County, you're the one I'm going to talk to next. You have a tornado warning coming out for you. So let's take a look at where this is. The main area of concern for rotation is just east of the airport. So this puts it just north 
of the Smyrna area. We're talking about, uh, let me take it in really tight so you can kind of see. So it's near, uh, it's near Percy Priest, bigger concern here, uh, Couchville, stretching further south towards Smyrna. We'll put a storm track on this so you can get a good sense of the greatest area of concern with this storm. Let me adjust this just a touch so you can get a better time frame here. So this puts it into Silver Hill, uh, closer to the 822 time frame. And then as we, I'm pulling up some other data to show you, that's why you're hearing my voice slow down just a bit. So hail signature upwards of an inch. We're also seeing the possibility, um, not just of 70 mile per hour straight line winds, but closer to the Laverne Smyrna area, especially just on the north side of that. That would be the greatest concern uh, to see some possible, ro possible rotation. So this tornado warning now in effect for, let me back it out so you can get a better sense. This is northern parts of Rutherford County, southern parts of Wilson County, southeastern parts of Davidson County until 845. Taking it down to street level so you can see where the strongest parts of these storms are. Uh, it's right near the Stones River's home showing up there, Janes Mill Road, Hollandale Road, Old Jones Road. Rockdale Fellowship Drive, Victory Road, North Lamar Road, Lone Oak Road. Eventually, this would bring it towards 840, at least the area of concern embedded within this storm. Take a look at the rotation signature. It's right up here. So this is the area Stones, Road, Stones River Road that is uh, in giving us the biggest concern that we could have a possible uh, tornado, tornadic signature with this system. We'll take a look at the shear signature as well. And sure enough, you can see how as the storm was moving, that shear really started to pick up very quickly near the Una area. This is really close to the Percy Priest Lake. So basically east of the airport, stretching just south of that, uh, moving right along the border between northern Rutherford County and southern parts of Wilson County. Here's an updated look at the storm track on that. 830 for Valley View. Canesville, this comes in at 834, Watertown at 842, Alexandria at 849. Now, I mentioned that was not the only warning, so we got to take a look at this one coming out of Macon County. This is in the center part of Macon County towards Lafayette. Eventually, that would put it into western parts of Clay County, closer to uh, northern parts of uh, Clay County, eventually towards the Salina area. You see that severe thunderstorm warning uh, coming very, very close uh, to that area. So. Two tornado warnings, this one, Clay, Jackson, Macon County. This is until 845. If you are on the western parts of Macon County, you are not under the same severe threat. This is across central parts. It's this area right here that's the biggest concern. So Lafayette, you're down in the most interior room. This would eventually come out. This is western parts of Clay County. This is Jackson County. So it includes the northwestern parts of Jackson County until 845. This is the second warning that came in. The first one is for a storm that's just on the northern Rutherford County border. So we back up and take it in real tight to look for this. The biggest concern, it doesn't have that traditional hook signature in part because the storm is just so, so close to it. Uh, but what we're looking at is this complex of storms near the Smyrna area. So this is the greatest area of concern. Tornado moving towards 840, tornado warning, I should say. It's not confirmed. Tornado warning moving towards 840, then eventually towards Highway 231. Las Casas, you would be in the far reaches of this if this can hold together. 845 is where this warning is issued, so this is now southeast of downtown Nashville. If you're in downtown, your threat is rapidly decreasing. The wind and the lightning threat is still there. The hail threat is decreasing significantly, but now we're starting to see the storm system perk up and we have the tornado warning in effect um, for areas, northern parts of Rutherford County, right along that Rutherford County, Wilson County border. This extends over towards Nolanville. You just saw how the National Weather Service uh, releasing Davidson County from the tornado warning. It's now just Rutherford and Wilson County. This is for the storm system that continues to move to the southeast. It is racing. It's moving at 45 miles per hour, and it is packing a significant punch. Uh, so <clears throat> this is located near Rural Hill. It's about 14 miles southwest of Lebanon. So taking it in really close. This is near the Vesta area. 
we will get uh, a better sense of where this is. This is just west of Gladeville. Uh, this is about due north of Smyrna. So to take it in uh, even tighter, to give you a better sense of where this is, the concern is in this general territory, is right up here. So that's where the concern is for rotation. We take a look, and sure enough, with the velocity, you're seeing um, it's this territory here, just north of Smyrna. And we'll take it in really tight so we can get to take a look at some of the street level. This is, uh, again, near the lake. And so uh, this is near Pool Knobs Recreation Area, Old Corinth Church Road, Couchville Pike, Rockdale Fellowship Road, Victory Road, Barnett Road, Corinth Road. The main area of concern being right here, of course, you're seeing the, the sweep come out of the Nashville radar. So red being wind that's moving away, green being wind that's moving towards. So it's this, it's this, little, this little nugget right here that's really the biggest area of concern. So just north of uh, the Smyrna area at this point, moving off to the southeast. We'll switch it back to radar so you can kind of see. It's very difficult to pick out on radar uh, especially because it's uh, kind of on the back side of the storm system and it's moving around 40 miles per hour. So it's this territory right here that has the greatest area for concern and it's moving uh, right along the county border. So this is Wilson County here. It's this dark line. So it's moving right along that county border. Uh, or sorry, say that again. We have 40 at 840. So let's go ahead and take that camera so we can take a look at it. This is one of our TDOT cameras of 40 at 840. This is in that general area. And you can see clearly <clears throat> with it being after sunset, uh, we the visibility low. This camera not looking at a, color, a colored view of that also, um, but the camera really starting to shake. Uh, this thunderstorm also beginning to blossom and expand in structure. An updated storm track on this, especially as we look towards the area of greatest concern. This takes it right down that county borderline 452. So Fall Creek Recreation Area. And I'll tell you, some of the, sometimes the, the folks that are in the most danger with these storm systems are folks that are camping or at recreation centers because they tend to not have sturdy structures. And they are clearly, most of them don't have access to a television unless they're, um, unless they're in uh, an interior structure there. So uh, you can see NES power outages up to 26,000 at this point as well. Uh, here's an updated look at that storm track. Fate Sanders Recreation Area 817, Fall Creek Recreation Area at 821, Cedar Crest Golf Club at 823, Central Church 826, putting it near the Holly Grove Church area at 829. This tornado warning remains in effect for 845. There is a significant straight line wind threat that extends near this uh, area of circulation, this area of concern, uh, within the area of heaviest rain. So what I mean by that is just north of Smyrna is where we have this area of concern. It's right here. But notice how heavy the rain is and how it extends even further out. That is going to cause straight line winds to shoot out ahead of this, which can serve to weaken branches, can serve to weaken trees, which makes it take less to bring them down uh, in later parts. So this continues to push closer to 840. We just showed you that TDOT shot. Um, very heavy rain and strong straight line winds now extend into Lebanon. You may have just noticed the yellow filled in on the back side of this. So the National Weather Service extending severe thunderstorm warnings out ahead of this main line. Uh, it's south of I-40 as far as the western extent. I'll show that to you here. But the damaging straight line wind threat basically extends uh, in one continuous line all across our area. So we have two tornado warnings. We have one now for Macon County. We'll get another look at that one. And then we have one for the Rutherford-Wilson County line. This is moving away uh, from downtown. It's just south of Interstate 40. The tornado warning in Macon County is just south of the Kentucky border. Uh, incredibly heavy lightning and 60 to 70 mile per hour winds extend, though, all the way <clears throat> through Lewis County, parts of Wayne County, even north into parts of Perry County. So a significant damaging straight line wind threat remains with this storm system. Let's get an updated look at the Macon County tornado warned storm. The National Weather Service trimming that warning down just a bit. So it still includes 
the uh, eastern edge of Macon County, the western edge of Clay County. So eventually, Salina, this would be on your doorstep. Uh, this is moving due east. So we will get another look at that moving due east. Uh, the warning does include northeastern parts of Jackson County, but I expect the rotation signature within that storm to say north of Gainesboro. So it should stay closer to the Clay County, Jackson County border. Hermitage Springs, 822. Miles Crossroad, Crossroads, 826. Salina, 843. Uh, and then putting it into Timothy right around 851, putting it into Garrett's Mill right around 9 o'clock. Now, this warning in effect until 845, uh, the warning that includes parts of Robertson County, or I'm sorry, Rutherford County and Wilson County, that one also in effect until 845. So severe thunderstorm wind speeds now blanket Macon County down towards Trousdale County. It's this area that I'm talking about right here. So still seeing significant lightning. Uh, the National Weather Service did release that tornado warning for northern parts of Allen County, but they have continued the severe thunderstorm warning. I expect that to continue all the way through. Southern parts of Macon County into Trousdale County down into Wilson County, Lebanon. You are likely getting slammed with incredibly heavy wind at this point. Lots of lightning. The tornado warning extending further south than that. Uh, the area of greatest concern for circulation is actually near the uh, Smyrna Airport at this point. It is um, it is just northeast of the Smyrna Airport. So we'll zoom in really tight and get a sense of where that is for you. So this is right by uh, Highway 41, just east of Interstate 24. This is just uh, just about east of Laverne. So coming in pretty tight here. We are looking at this area, which it's a little odd when you think about, usually we get those tornado warnings kind of on the leading edge of these systems. This one is embedded a bit on the back end of it. It's located in this general territory right along that border. So really strong wind speeds extend on the southern flank of this as well. I've got to go ahead and uh, pop that on. So this is near the Leanna area, right by Highway uh, or Interstate 840. 60 to 65 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Those are in the upper levels of the storm. So it's highly likely that even stronger winds are getting dragged down to the surface with this. Uh, and we often see that with these storms. So uh, what we're talking about is uh, these really strong straight line winds that are embedded, that are likely causing a larger area of damage right across the border. So that's the Wilson County border. This is Rutherford County. So it's extending now towards Jefferson Springs. It's wrapping closer to the Jefferson Springs area, but then even on the backside of that, closer to Highway 41 near Smyrna, we've got some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds in this territory. Uh, the rotation concern is just northeast. So uh, the airport is located a little further east from that. The concern for rotation embedded within this area of the storm here, so it's really right along that border. And it is moving towards the east. Out ahead of it, though, we have these really strong winds. Uh, so real concern here for a very large area of damaging straight line wind, potentially bringing down even more um, even more uh, trees, even more power lines across the area. Uh, the National Weather Service just confirming to me that 80 mile per hour winds are getting picked up uh, just east of the Smyrna Airport. So um, <clears throat> this is closer to this sort of Stones River uh, Homes area. Jefferson Springs, really this entire area is just getting slammed with incredibly strong wind speeds. Look at this bullseye here. This is a really large area, just to put a measurement on this for you. So six to seven miles across, it's possible we may be having some sort of um, downburst, perhaps maybe a, a wet microburst with these. These can happen when thunderstorms uh, really begin to collapse on themselves. Wow, uh, that is a really large area to be picking up 80 to 70 mile per hour wind speeds in the upper levels of the storm. So oftentimes I show you the red and the green. That is uh, where we look for rotation. This is pure velocity. So I'm just looking at pure wind speed, uh, absent of direction. And look at this incredible area of upwards of 80 mile per hour winds that extends essentially from the Wilson County border to 840. 
that is going to bring trees down. That is going to bring power lines down. That is going to cause power outages in this area. That is going to bring a significant severe weather threat to it. So if you are in this area, this is Rutherford County. We're just north of Murfreesboro. I'll back it up to help give you a little bit more perspective. Uh, the main threat now just east of Smyrna, uh, right along that Wilson County border. This is some potent incredibly this is the strongest wind signature i've seen strongest and largest straight line wind signature i have seen tonight so backing it out to give you a little bit more perspective this is just north of the murfreesboro area i'll pull up that camera as well for folks in the borough that are wondering what's going on when does this get to my doorstep i'll also let you know that the national weather service canceled the tornado warning for clay jackson and macon county that rotation signature decreased um, and the rotation signature uh, s somewhat broader uh, right along that Rutherford Wilson County line, but it has not fallen apart completely. Uh, so there is some concern here that we still have that rotation. It would be uh, right along the border here. So in between Jefferson Springs and the Silver Hill, Silver Hill area. But my bigger concern here is really the swath of damaging straight line wind extending to the further south. I think this is gonna cause more significant more widespread damage to folks um, than even the possible rotation signature embedded within it. I don't say that lightly, but when you've got such a large, I mean, potentially a 10 mile swath of 80 mile per hour winds, and that's in the upper levels of the storm, you're looking at some real significant wind damage coming just off of 840, potentially um, moving into Highway 231, eventually towards Las Casas. So the rotation, the greatest area of that is here, but the straight line winds extend out of the tornado warning, out of the red box. That's where the severe thunderstorm warning is. And this whole area is moving off towards the east southeast at 45 miles per hour. It's not the only folks that are getting slammed with straight line wind at this speed. I'll show you um, quickly. We have, uh, here's a look at the watches and warnings that are in effect. So the connected yellow line, those are severe thunderstorm warnings. The whole area is getting blanketed with 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. Uh, and we've seen, gosh, I don't know what we're up to right now, seven or eight tornado warnings this evening. Along the leading edge of these storms, uh, it is possible that we will continue to see additional spin ups this evening. The most long lasting, the most widespread severe weather threat is the damaging straight line wind because everybody is under the gun for that right now. But as this storm, begins to sag further to the south. And as we continue to see some of those notches, the tornado threat, not zero. This is our Skynet camera in Murfreesboro. So the storm is just north of Mur Murfreesboro at this point, the tornado warned storm. It's not moving towards downtown in the borough, but the whole complex of storms is. And so folks in Murfreesboro, I want you to be in that lowest, most interior room. Straight line wind, your primary threat, but I can't tell you that something isn't gonna begin to spin pretty quickly tonight. Lots of lightning on the backside of this. You can pick out some of the cloud structure real low, hanging, especially off into the distance here, off to the right hand side of your screen. You can see all the lightning really beginning to illuminate the center of the storm also. Hail remains a big threat tonight. Uh, we've had reports of hail upwards of an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. Uh, some significant reports of trees down. 80 mile per hour winds being reported near Walter Hill, right on the north side of Murfreesboro. Uh, those are wind reports, not necessarily, um, we can't, I can't, the wind, <laughs> when a wind measurement is made, the, the, the device that takes the measurement, it doesn't know if it's rotating wind or if it's straight line wind. But an 80 mile per hour wind gust reported near Walter Hill, which is just on the north side of, uh, of the Murfreesboro area. So I'll pull the radar back over so you can see where this is just north of Murfreesboro. You saw the lightning strikes in the distance, not a whole lot of rain happening and the temperature is still quite warm in that area. Uh, and the, the center of that storm is moving further to the east. So the area of greatest concern is here now. It's just, whoop, it's just to the west of Las Casas. That 80 mile per hour wind that was uh, right in the Walter Hill area. So you can see how this is Put a measurement. Gosh, I think this is what five miles, seven miles north of Murfreesboro. Taking a look at the golly, look at that wind velocity there. So yeah, we had that 80 mile per hour wind, and sure enough, the radar is seeing uh, anywhere from 70 to upwards of 80, 81 miles per hour through the Walter Hill area. This is all headed towards Las Casas. 
the rotation signature somewhat broader but not falling apart completely. So the National Weather Service keeping this tornado warning. The greatest area of concern is right on top of Walter Hill. That's where the strongest wind speed is. It's moving east at 40 miles per hour. Uh, so the forward speed of the storm, considerable. The embedded wind speed, you just saw another sweep come through, and they've, they've ticked down just a little bit, but that doesn't mean they're not going to tick back up. Uh, the forward speed of the storm at 40 miles per hour. Now, the greatest area of concern uh, embedded within it is actually moving due east. So Walter Hill is where the greatest area of concern is. Murfreesboro, the core of circulation is not moving towards you, but the damaging straight line winds are. We're starting to get reports now of power out in the Walter Hill area as well. We're getting reports of power outages in Hickman County, shingles, trees down, a lot of damage starting to come in being reported. This is a look, let me update this since that sweep came through. This is a look at the storm track for the greatest area, both strongest wind and the rotational wind that we're concerned about, the tornado warned component of this storm. This is a storm track on this as it moves towards the east. So uh, Valley View, 831. Uh, Milton putting it in at 843, eventually towards Auburn Elementary School. Let's cast this. You're in, the, you're in the path of this as well, even though it's not popping up in the storm track there. I want to show you a view also because the Murfreesboro camera continues to get darker and darker. Um, reports of damage coming in from Robertson County as well. That was from the storms that came through earlier. Clearly, um, there's going to be a lot of reports of damage as we head into the evening hours, even after these storms stop and emergency officials catch up. Man, look at that camera shake. This is another one of our cameras that is you rarely see this one shake. It is very securely mounted to the top of the structure. Um, lots of lightning, copious amounts of lightning. Temperature is still 86, so the strongest wind, you can see the trees not moving. The strongest wind and uh, that rain-cooled air has not made it into Murfreesboro. What that means is the worst hasn't arrived yet. So um, the wind will steadily pick up. These storm systems are moving at nearly highway speed, so really important to get that get down into that most interior room. At this point, the strongest winds being measured are just west of Las Casas. It's this bright pink area here, upwards of 70 miles per hour. We saw some 80 mile per hour winds near Murfreesboro, 60, uh, and that's elevated. It's possible that some of those winds are crashing down even harder down to the surface. That's why the severe thunderstorm warning extends. So the lightning signature, the strongest um, uh, near the Kentucky border. But then as you extend further to the south, uh, really some strong, incredibly strong winds. So that tornado warning was canceled for Macon County. Severe thunderstorm warning uh, issued extending into Clay County and Jackson County. Uh, they also included some language on that, that a tornado is possible, although the primary threat, we're not seeing rotation at this point, primary threat, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. So we're gonna keep a real close eye on this cell for additional spin-ups. The strongest winds now extend down into Smith County, Trousdale getting slammed with lightning and really heavy rain. This is on the northern part of uh, Wilson County as well. Lebanon, things should be improving steadily for you at this point. The severe threat rapidly moving off to the east. Tornado warning remains in effect for right along the Wilson Rutherford County border. So closer to the Las Casas area and it's moving away. So it is moving towards Cannon County. Eventually, if it holds together, eventually that would put it near the border of um, parts of DeKalb County as well. Very strong straight line winds extend down into Rutherford County, Murfreesboro getting slammed with really heavy rain. You can see the wind speeds uh, or you can see the thunderstorms extending further west than that. We'll take a look, too, because I want, want everyone to know what's coming. We only, can only focus on one thing at a time, but there sure is a lot going on. So Rutherford County, southern parts of Williamson County. This is nor, near Eagleville and Spring Hill. So down towards Columbia, uh, I'll pull that um, Pull that Skynet camera up for you as well so we can get a live look of what conditions look like in Columbia. And no shock there, it doesn't look pretty. A very heavy rain, very gusty wind, trees howling there, copious amounts of lightning in the background. Really pleased to not, well, there's one car driving. Um, this is not really a storm system that you want to be driving. And I know it's not always possible that folks have 
life and things going on. Uh, but when you've got 80 mile per hour wind gusts out there, that's enough to push a vehicle for sure. This is a look at uh, our Skynet camera downtown. Here's another look downtown conditions. The severe threat over uh, for downtown Nashville. Unfortunately, the severe threat not over for our neighbors to the south, to the west, to the east, to the northeast, because this line is connected as it moves further to the south. So stretching through Columbia, down into northern parts of Lawrence County, down into northern parts of Wayne County, really significant strong straight line winds. We'll get a, an updated look at those wind speeds and then head back over. So um, the strongest still being picked up near the Murfreesboro area. We gotta go back to that. Uh, so really broad area of strong straight line wind being picked up. Summit, look at that, 70, 80, 82 miles per hour being picked up in downtown Murfreesboro. Really incredibly strong wind speeds starting to pick up um, across this area. The um, 80 mile per hour winds, the main concern in this area, that goes without saying, looking at these wind speeds here. Uh, here's another look at our Skynet camera in Murfreesboro. Lightning illuminating the sky. The rainfall has um, diminished just a touch where the Skynet, or the, the Skynet camera is, but man, oh man, it is just howling. And Murfreesboro was one of the harder hit areas on Wednesday as well. So a lot of folks that were hard hit Wednesday getting hard hit again. This is insult to injury. It's not just, it's not just hard on the soul, um, but the trees that may have been weakened Wednesday night then you add some 80 mile per hour winds tonight, and it goes without saying, you're gonna start knocking some trees down. You're gonna start to see some real damage in parts of the area. So uh, let's get an updated look at where this is since this, this is one of our strongest storms at this point. The greatest concern um, for, uh, for that tornadic rotation is now east of the Water Hill area, although I wanna put the wind speed back on because you can see Again, one of my bigger concerns is just how, look at that, that's a 20 mile stretch. 20 mile stretch of potentially 60, 80, 82 mile per hour winds. You don't have to be under a tornado warning to, to endure some serious damage from wind speed of that magnitude. Uh, Wednesday, we did have a confirmed tornado. As I do this, I'm gonna put another storm track and then we'll take it down to street level. Wednesday, we did have a tornado, confirmed tornado, EF0 in southern parts of Montgomery County. Sustained wind speeds with that tornado were 80 miles per hour. Well, the same storm system brought 85 mile per hour wind to parts of Williamson County and it was just straight lines. So you can get more damage. You can get stronger wind from straight line wind than you do sometimes from rotational wind. So while clearly our focus remains uh, when tornado warnings are issued, that's where our focus remains. I do want to drive home the point that if it is storming outside your house, um, they, they are posing a very broad, very large, widespread, straight line wind threat, significant. And it does look like these storms will continue to maintain their strength even as they head into the Cumberland Plateau. So if it's not raining on your doorstep yet, if the wind is not howling just yet, it will be. Uh, reports of trees down in the Smyrna area on Hazelwood Drive at Eden Springs. Um, trees down countywide across parts of Murfreesboro. This is our T-Dot camera in Murfreesboro, how you really see traffic crawling by there. Um, that's good to have it crawling by if you if you can you want to pull over i will tell you because i know there's an there's an overpass kind of there never want to stop under overpasses the wind speed actually increases when it gets funneled underneath those so that's not safe you want to um you a you want to you want to pull over in a sturdy structure and get out of the storm um b an and uh, going underneath an overpass is not safe because the winds can actually be stronger there um if you have to get out of your vehicle they tell you to get in a ditch on the side of the road the only time that's not a good idea is when you have flooding concerns. Um, at this point, because it is so late, uh, it's, you don't wanna do that. You wanna stay in your vehicle, um, try to pull off if you can, try to exit the interstate, try to get to a sturdy structure. If for absolutely, if you're the worst case scenario, tonight or any other night, you find yourself stuck in a vehicle and you cannot get out and you cannot get to a sturdy structure, you keep that vehicle turned on, you put it in park and you keep your seatbelt on. You 
duck your head down and you put your hands over the back of your head, you and the passengers in there, and you try to use that vehicle. I was demonstrating this motion. You try to use the safety features of that vehicle to your advantage. It's not where you want to be, but in worst case scenarios, you end up start making the best decision that you can. Um, to National Weather Service reissuing um, quite a few severe thunderstorm warnings across the area and I expect those to continue all night long. We're actually under a severe thunderstorm watch until 1 a.m. So let's take it into some street level to show you where those strongest winds are. Barlow Lane, so this is to give you a better perspective of where we are initially. So we're in the less, we're talking about between Las Casas and Milton. This is east of Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro, I do not expect the tornado threat to impact you. It's straight line winds that are on your doorstep. Significant straight line winds, but they are straight line winds. So Las Casas, Barlow Lane, Spain Hill Road, Millstone Creek Road, Valley View Road, Farmhouse Road, Rhodes Lane. We'll take it in even tighter to show you where some of those strongest wind speeds are. Barlow Lane, J.W. Jordan Road, Cherokee Trail, over towards McKee Road, Hoover Road, 12 Corners Road, Rhodes Lane, Highway 96, Lofton, Las Casas. This is all on your doorstep. Wow, that wind speed is just really impressive on radar. So again, stretching from Cottrell towards Murfreesboro uh, up to Las Casas, we've got 60 to 70 mile per hour straight line winds. There is the concern that we have some rotation embedded within this. That's why the tornado warning remains in effect for um, five more minutes. Uh, this is a look at velocity. It's, gosh, it's really hard to pick out um, the tornado warning with this because of the red, right on top of the red. So let's keep it with the radar because I think that makes it easier to pick things out. Uh, Highway 96 in between Las Casas and Auburn Town, that's where we've got some uh, real concern as to um, the most, the, the strongest winds across that area, possibility of some rotation. Uh, Cascade Falls subdivision, reporting very high winds, very heavy rain. It's improving there. Folks in the Cascade Falls subdivision reported, reporting that um, conditions have improved significantly. So we will we will take that. Um, it's 8:41 at this point, and we um, we are mostly underneath all uh, severe thunderstorm warnings across the area. So I want to back this out to the big picture and, and give you some storm tracks and give you some indications of what everybody is dealing with. And then we will go continue to check on that Rutherford County storm. So to my friends up in Kentucky, Cumberland County, that's Burksville, uh, Monroe County, that's Tompkinsville. You have severe thunderstorm warnings that extend into Clinton County. This whole line is going to continue its march. It's all straight line wind. I see zero notching there, so I'm not as concerned about rotation. Uh, we did have that tornado warning of the storm that came into Clay County down towards Salina. Uh, and uh, that severe thunderstorm threat will continue. Some good news, the National Weather Service canceled the tornado warning for Rutherford County, so there are no active tornado warnings across the News Channel 5 viewing area at this point. There are widespread severe thunderstorm warnings, and I, I expect this severe thunderstorm threat to continue to increase. This is, this is a look at the storm that's coming out of Clay County into Pickett County, so the strongest core of that likely impacting northern parts of Jackson County. Here's a storm track, putting it into Unity at 856, Bloomington 905, Double Top 917, um, putting it into Birdstown at 909, Double Top 917, Jamestown at 928. Now, uh, extending even further south, so Clay County down into Jackson County, this area here we've got torrential rain and this is what's going to move into Jackson County. I'm also going to switch this over just briefly to take a look at some of the wind velocities up here because again there are some indications now that these storms may actually strengthen as they head into some of our higher elevations which means widespread especially in some of those really tree dense areas of the of the Cumberland the beautiful areas and anyone that might be camping or at any recreational facility, they got to know about these storms coming because there will be a rapid rise in water from very heavy rain and incredibly strong straight line winds. We've seen 80 mile per hour winds impact parts of the area tonight and ter uh, unbelievable amounts of lightning. Heaviest rain, strongest winds are just now starting to work into the western part of Putnam County 
and I will pull up our uh, Skynet camera there as well so we can get a sense. Hard, at this point, there is no rain falling, or there, the rain is just now starting to work into the Cookville area, so it's looking very dark. Um, but what a different scene when you compare this to Murfreesboro. Now, again, the tornado threat is zero for Murfreesboro at this point. Still some gusty wind and still pouring rain and still quite a bit of lightning. You just saw how that camera got illuminated. But conditions are starting to improve there. Uh, back to radar to give you a tour of what's going on. Uh, this is, we are now into the western parts of Putnam County, stretching down into DeKalb County. This is right around the Smithville area. That's where we have a very strong storm coming in. I know this tornado warning is showing up, but the National Weather Service has canceled that. Um, so it just dropped out. Uh, so that was canceled early. At this point, it is severe thunderstorm warnings that extend now till 930. Uh, extending further to the east and southeast. This is now towards Smithville. Cannon County down towards Woodbury. That's where the strongest winds are. Back up into Smith County, parts of Wilson County, Watertown. Incredibly heavy rain. Very strong straight line winds. 50 to 60 mile per hour winds with this. Severe thunderstorm warnings extending now into Bedford, Coffee, Rutherford, and Warren counties. It is along the leading edge of this line of storms is where you'll find the strongest winds. So on the back side of it, and even internally when it's right on top of your house, yes, there will be some strong wind speeds, but it's really out ahead of the main line that, you, that you'll find uh, the 70 mile per hour winds. As you get into the interior of a storm, uh, it tends to not have quite the same amount of punch, uh, but still plenty of punch to it. Uh, in part because of the rain that's coming down, in part because of the wind speeds that are still getting dragged down to the surface. Uh, this just now south of the Columbia area, we'll get an updated look at that. Skynet camera as well. I'll pull this up in the double boxes next to me so you can see it. That's Clarksville. Let's go to Columbia. There we go. So um, the wind finally starting to die down just a touch there, but copious amounts of lightning. Um, uh, significant reports of trees down in the uh, Walter Hill area. This was over by Smyrna. This was the storm we were tracking through Rutherford County that had all that strong straight line wind. I have not had reports in Columbia proper, but I have had significant reports of widespread trees down uh, and power outage across Murray County. Now, taking this back over to radar, you can see that storm system, man, it is not, it's not slowing down and it's not going to slow down. As we look towards um, northern parts of Marshall County. This is right here. This is this area I'm talking about. So just east of 65 and then the really strong winds are just west of 65 in Murray County. This is moving towards the interstate, but Columbia proper downtown conditions starting to improve there just a little bit. The heaviest wind, the heaviest rain now in the southern part of Murray County. This is coming to the northern parts of Giles County, northern part of Lawrence County, central parts of Wayne County as well. Just getting hammered with this really heavy rain. The strongest wind that we have indicated on radar at this point, and I hesitate to even say that because it's strong everywhere, is actually coming into um, parts of Coffee County. Uh, so this is just, just up Interstate 24, um, just outside Manchester. This is where we've got the strongest wind speeds at this time. Still an incredible swath all across Rutherford County being indicated here. Still upwards of 60, 70, even 80 mile per hour winds. So this is coming out of the Christiana area and then uh, eventually pushing into the eastern tier and southern tier. Uh, and we'll do some storm tracks on this so you can see where some of these some of these storms are. I mentioned the possibility of some of these storms increasing in strength today as they move into some of our higher elevations. If you were out and about, I certainly don't have to tell you it was sunny. It was warm. Today's the first official day of summer. So there's a lot of heat and humidity. There's a lot of storm energy that these storms are fueling off of. There's a lot of upper level, level wind support as well. Cookville, this is on your doorstep at uh, 8.54. So that's in about six minutes. Uh, just after 10 o'clock, we'd put it closer to the Cumberland County area, closer to the Crossville area, 9.30 for the Crossville area, uh, which they had a tough time yesterday. We had a tornado warning in Cumberland County yesterday. 
No tornado warnings active at this point. This entire line, the main concern now, 50 to 70 mile per hour winds. Not impossible that we wouldn't see an additional spin up this evening, but your primary threat is straight line wind. So that threat is mostly on the leading edge of this system coming down into Cab County, Cannon County, copious amounts of lightning on, on the back side of this as well. I do want to take a minute to talk about who's not in danger because I know that's a valuable thing to hear also. Uh, this is a, a wide look. It still has that storm track on it for you so I can give you some, some of the basic anatomy of what's happening. This long line of storms that came through, this is where the threat is, right along that leading edge. We knew it was going to be the whole night. Um, if you care to know, the t what this storm system is called is uh, um, an MCS, a mesoscale convective system. That's a whole lot of jargon to say that this is a self-sustaining cluster of storms. It started in Colorado yesterday, and now it's in Tennessee. Traditionally, what happens with these is on the leading edge, you get incredibly strong straight line winds, long duration straight line wind events. And that's exactly what we've had tonight. And we will continue to have as the northern part of this pushes into Cumberland and Clinton County, Clay and Pickett County, Overton and Fentress County, all across Putnam County, down into White County, down into uh, Warren County, down towards Coffee County, Moore County, Lincoln, Franklin County. I mean, everybody's getting warned on this all across Wayne and Giles County. I will also say though that on the back side of this, notice how rain is starting to fill in. If you're on the back end, as long as there isn't lightning happening where you are, and there are a couple lightning strikes out on the back side of the system, your severe threat is over. Your flooding threat is not over. Some folks have had flooding issues tonight. I'll show you the flood warnings that are in effect in just a second because it's still raining. And this is very characteristic of this type of storms. Rain tends to fill in on the backside, and that can be actually where you really struggle with some flooding issues because the debris that was brought down from these damaging straight line winds can block drains. You get blocked drains, you get heavy persistent rain that goes on for another couple hours, and you start to deal with some drainage issues, some big time drainage issues. So there are countless reports of trees down across the area power outages across the area, and now it's continuing to rain and it's after dark. That means if you were to try to head outside, and figure out what kind of damage is on your property, you're not gonna see it clearly, you're not gonna see it well, and you may not even be able to notice a power line or potential threat that's on the ground. Let the emergency officials handle this. They are busy, but they, will, they are getting out there and they are helping folks tonight. The chat that I'm in with the National Weather Service, emergency managers are in there, fire, um, all kinds of officials that are working to keep folks safe across Middle Tennessee, and there are countless reports going out of them assisting folks and helping. So very heavy rain now on the backside. This or light to moderate rain at some parts. It's coming down pretty hard across parts of Henry County, but the main threat, the main wind threat, remains on the leading edge of the storm system. There was a flash flood watch in effect for our Kentucky counties. Um, and uh, there was a concern for some flash flooding across the area as well. This is a look at the current flood threat. This is your flash flood watch that remains in effect. Uh, this is a look at, um, so we have aerial flood warnings in effect and it doesn't look like there's any flash flooding at this point. The darker green color that you see across Trigg, Christian and Todd County, that's aerial flooding. That's what I was talking about where Rain continues to fall for a steady period of time, and that can lead to a steady rise, especially in flood-prone spots, streams, creeks, low-lying areas. Back to the northern part of this line, because I want to get an updated look at who's under the gun at this point. Strongest winds in our, in our Kentucky counties are just now on the border of Cumberland and Clinton County. They extend further to the south through parts of Clay and Pickett County. Uh, possible here on Overton County, there's a little bit of an appendage that's starting to stick out. Um, it looks like there may be some broad rotation near the Livingston area coming out of Burristown. This moving to the east. So um, the warning on this is for a severe thunderstorm warning. I mentioned tonight, though it's not impossible that we would see an additional spin up throughout the evening hours just to put a storm track on, on the greatest area of concern, especially since this is near Livingston. Uh, 856, this is in Livingston, 905 Alpine, uh, Cravenstown right around 914. If it holds together, that puts it on the northern part of Sandy at 919. Uh, there's a broad area, uh, and oftentimes when you get these really strong storms, you can get some of that broader rotation in the upper levels. Doesn't necessarily mean that that rotation is making it to the ground, but it's an area of concern. Hail also a significant concern this is just the hail signature over the last 15 minutes. So Clay County, Jackson County, upwards of an inch, possibly even larger than that. 
Then as you extend a little bit further to the south, you can see that really strong thunderstorms coming through DeKalb County, parts of Coffee County also. Um, this extends south closer to the border uh, and will continue to move on at least for the next few hours. Uh, main threat remaining 50 to 70 mile per hour winds. Hail upwards of an inch to an inch and a half. Possible, incredibly heavy rain with this and we continue to see um, concerns for trees down, power out. Uh, this is across Cannon County, Coffee County, so down towards Woodbury, that's where some of the harder hit areas right now. It's really DeKalb County and areas of Cannon County that are really getting slammed with some of the hardest part of this storm. Uh, it's through this area right here and then stretching down into Cannon County. Murfreesboro, you are in the clear. Can't tell you that there isn't going to be more issues with trees down and the power outages across that part of the area, but as far as your storm threat, it is light rain at this point and the strongest part moving out. So down towards Chapel Hill, uh, northern parts of Murray County, we're seeing very strong storms extend here. The severe thunderstorm warnings, they're going to ride all the way through our area. So we'll continue to see these um, through at least the 930 or 10 o'clock time frame. The strongest part of the storm remains the northern flank of it. This is north of I-40. South of I-40, uh, it's becoming a little more broken in nature, but it's certainly not falling apart. Um, the likely timing for this storm system to clear us, I'm going to put a time, a storm track on this, is around 9.30 to 10 o'clock. The main threat as this moves into higher elevations is wind. This has really begun to transition into a, not that it hasn't been all night, but there are no active tornado warnings at this point, and so damaging straight line wind remains the most significant concern with these storm systems. This is a look at the storm track. Um, we are going to send it back to programming at this point, uh, but I'm going to continue to keep an eye on these storms, and we will continue to have updates on the News Channel 5 Facebook page. If you, uh, if you had some damage, if there are reports or, or, or pictures that you can take safely that you would like to share to us, we can help get those to the National Weather Service. Um, uh, we will continue to see more storms as we come into the overnight hours. There's actually another round of storms I'm expecting to come through around daybreak tomorrow. So while this round of severe storms is winding down, we are not out of the severe weather woods. Um, I will have the latest on these storms, as I mentioned, on the News Channel 5 Facebook page. And of course, right on top of the 10 o'clock news, we're going to get you everything you need to know about tonight's storms and what you can expect as you head into the weekend. Be safe tonight. This has been a Storm 5 Severe Weather Update.